Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome on board the Sunset Safari. We're starting off with a lilac breasted roller that's flittering about amongst these silver cluster leaves. Initially, when we stopped, we were looking at some squirrels that had a lot of energy. Much like myself this afternoon. Hi everyone, it's me, Trishala. I've got a paw on camera and it's nice and warm, but it is very, very windy. And that means it's going to be a little more difficult to find animals, but that's okay. We're still going to give it a great go. I am hoping to make our way to the hyena den today. Yay! We can try our luck there. Windy. My vehicle doesn't do too well in that area, but we're going to try anyway, because you never know. We might just be lucky. Now, as usual, we are live and interactive, so you can send through questions and comments, you can chat about anything you like, you can tell me how you're enjoying the safari this afternoon. Whatever you would like. It's a Sunday afternoon as well. Mm, there's something very special about a Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon spent on safari. Now, to send us questions and comments, you can head over to our website, wildert.tv, and you can register and then we can hear from you. If you'd like to just keep up with the conversation though, you can head over to Twitter and you can use hashtag Wild Earth. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe and you can keep up to date in all our latest wildlife action. The bush is very quiet except for the wind. In fact, if it were not as windy, we might, he might hear a little bit more but we can't the wind is dominating paul you're looking forward to this afternoon's sunset safari i'm so happy so happy to know that now if i were at home well given that i'm south african if i were at home it's a sunday afternoon and i knew this live safari was on i think i would be enjoying a nice braai or a barbecue if you're not south african safari in the background that's how I would enjoy it got a whole lot of silver cluster leaves here maybe squirrels bouncing about but they're too quick for us today our lilac breasted roller has left us too and so we're gonna keep on moving I'm going to head like I said towards the hyena den that's in the south but we can only really enter that area at about in about an hour so we're going to move around in the south we're going to look at little things this is the best time to do it because it's the heat of the day and the heat of the day is when insects are really active birds are really active so we can take a closer look at those smaller things get a nice starting pace also going to go past the sausage tree down in the dip not too far from here I'll have a look if there are any birds there this morning during the sunrise safari Tess went and had a look there and she saw some quite a bit of action lots of birds around the tree speaking of Tess she and Gert are out as well on Juma I think they're going to head north while I head south there's also Rex out in Pridelands and Steve out in Amakala so lots and lots to look forward to. But first, let me send you over to have a look at the weather. Well, good afternoon everybody nice and windy afternoon not so great for the animals perhaps but at least for us it is keeping us cool and we've started our afternoon adventure looking at a very faint moon up in a very 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 blue skyline I'm loving the fact that there is not a cloud in the sky and we're hoping it's gonna be a very successful afternoon my name is Tess behind the camera is G thank you for joining us this afternoon we have got some big plans now not long ago there was some alarm calling heard on the dam cam which is down in front of us through the thickets so we're slowly making our way towards the big dam right in the middle of Juma 
And we stopped to just appreciate the moon that had it spotted. It's so faded that I actually struggled to see it. And you can see the tops of the trees are blowing, blowing, blowing in that wind. Now it really is going to be a bit of a tough afternoon for finding animals, but I suppose in this greenery we can at least appreciate some of the smaller things as they're flitting past. Some butterflies flitting around, we're going to hope for some birds too. And we've just found a leopard track. So I think it's going to be a good, 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 good afternoon. But my plan is to check the dam. If we can't find anything, it is always possible that in this wind the animals are feeling a little bit nervous. So there might be a false alarm. We can't hear any alarm calling where we are now and we're not that far away. So we should be hearing it if it was still happening. But if that doesn't work out, we're going to head to the far northeastern side of the property and hope that we can find you something along there. I'd also really like to see some elephants, if I'm honest, but whatever comes, we shall take it. And speaking of, we're going to go and check the dam because we don't want to give too much of a lapse between the alarm calls and us getting there. Let's hope, fingers crossed, with this leopard track here, maybe there's a leopard that's come along. <laughs> Andrew, the video guy, good afternoon. Happy to hear that you're joining us all the way from Durban. How's it looking over there? Maybe a little bit different to here. <laughs> I could actually imagine as well. So that's in KwaZulu-Natal for those of you that don't know uh, where Durban is in South Africa. But I can imagine the Eastern Cape is looking a little different to here today as well. It is a lot colder down there and the Western Cape too. This wind is coming from there. It's coming from there. Oh, what an afternoon. We were just chatting about the weather actually. You know, when people say they start chatting about weather in conversation, probably not a good thing, but actually we were talking about it in a way with substance. I really like this weather. It's hot because of the wind. The wind has got a bit of a chill to it. So it's keeping us cool enough that we're not feeling like we would overheat by sitting out in the sun. A big difference to yesterday where all the animals and us we're feeling very hot in the sun. We were actively looking for shade just like all the animals would be. So I'm hoping that we can relate that back to the animals as well. They won't necessarily be looking for shade. Careful little dove. They might be happy to be out in the open and you'll probably find they want to be either hiding in a thicket to be completely blocked from the wind very nervously or out in the open hoping that they can see predators coming from that clearing because of the wind. So I suppose we'll see how it changes animal to animal. Oh, have we got a lunchtime that's happening? <laughs> so we are just arriving at the dam. I'm seeing that there are some red-billed hornbills down here looking for lunch. So we're going to see if they're going to stick around. But we'll send you over to Rexon to say hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon everyone and welcome in the afternoon ride. It is windy here at Frontland Echo Training Safari Life. We are starting our show, headed more to the north of the conservancy and try if there's anything here. From myself, Rexon, uh, BK behind the camera and this afternoon we joined by Morris, which is the best tracker here at Frontland. We joined forces, all of us being three in order to attract anything that uh, we are wishing to see here. It's been a long time. We haven't seen leopards and we haven't seen the lions. So being all together like this, it's a strong forces. We might um, combine our skills of trekking and find a leopard or anything that might be interesting around in the area. This morning we left uh, breeding out of uh, Buffalo in this uh, area heading to the west i believe that uh, maybe they might return back to the water if not if there's any pride around in the area following this uh, buffalo we might be lucky this afternoon maybe around the water hole who knows quite a lot of things that uh, follow up on the buffalo not just because they are going to make a kill there's a huge benefit <coughs> from cats following buffalo Sometimes there's new baby born.
Of course, while we are checking around the area, anything that would be benefiting from the buffalo, I would like to send you to Steve and join him this afternoon and see what's up to. Good afternoon and welcome on board the Amakala vehicle here in the Eastern Cape. And what you saw in the frame a moment ago were two female ant eating chats. That is a first bird for me. Yes, hello, my name is Steve. I'm joined by Morgan on camera, and we are very excited once again to have you with us out here in the Eastern Cape in Amakala, where we're hoping to find all sorts of wonderful animals, birds, and plants for you this afternoon. Now, Oh, our anteating chats have decided to vanish. But the landscape out here is quite something. Quite something. Rolling, undulating hills. We haven't seen any animals on our way through this afternoon. They're on the turn my mind, Morgan. There's another chat, I think. It is windy here as well in the Eastern Cape. Not as cold as this morning, but hopefully. The snow that fell in Grahamstown yesterday is going to have burnt off with today's sunshine. Lovely to see. So it's a new bird for me for my list. It takes me up to 651 birds. to become a skilled safari guide, traversing the African bush and encountering wild animals up close. Whether you're a retiree, a recent graduate, or a professional seeking a change, the 55-day eco-training program is for you. This comprehensive course will provide you with an unparalleled opportunity to gain expertise in every aspect of the African bush. 
With the coaching of experienced training guides, you'll embark on an unforgettable adventure that will give you a deep understanding of wildlife, conservation, and African cultures. Over the course of the program, you'll learn essential skills such as animal tracking, bird identification, and bush survival techniques. But the benefits of this rigorous training go far beyond technical knowledge. You'll also form close bonds with fellow nature enthusiasts and conservationists from around the world, creating a global network of like-minded individuals. Your days will be filled with excitement and wonder as you observe animals in their natural habitats and explore the diverse landscapes of Africa. Return home with newfound knowledge, a qualification, unforgettable memories and a sense of accomplishment that will last a lifetime. We have come down to Treehouse Dam and how lovely we've got some kudu coming down to have a drink. This is quite nice because we don't often see them at a waterhole or at least not drinking at a waterhole. Something I've not thought about before but now coming to see them. Nice little herd having a drink and so relaxed it's such a pleasure. These are just some females. No little ones, although there may be some sub adults there, but I don't see any little ones. Oh no, what spooked you? Shame. In this kind of condition, with the wind really, it's picked up a lot. It's, it's pretty much howling. It's quite uncomfortable, even for us. And so for them, any little just the possibility of something is gonna gonna spook them because they rather react than not that wind is adding that extra layer of uncertainty a few are still drinking but the others have have gone over to the dam wall and are having a look just making sure that everything is okay Oh, just as I was saying that it's nice to see them relaxed. Well, we are on the other side of the dam wall and I don't want to get up onto the dam wall because um, it will just it will just scare them. So we'll let them finish their drink in peace and then we can kind of move towards the dam or up onto the wall again. I also think I'm. Excuse me. I, I also think I'm going to investigate the other side, since they are looking over that way, and I'm going to send you over to test in the meantime. Oh, what a special sighting, Trish. I don't remember the last time I saw a kudu drinking. On this side, I'm very happy though. I won't be distracted for very long by the kudus drinking because we found elephants. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to see a little baby Ellie out in the open the whole time I've been back and they've all been hiding. So this is an absolute treat. It's quite a young little one still sticking quite close to the adults but old enough to kind of know what it's doing with its little trunk oh. see how it's hugging close to the front legs looking for some milk at the moment there you go trying to drink you can see the little trunk sticking out right above its head so an elephant calf has to curl its trunk up and backwards to be able to drink, didn't drink for very long. This is a very small mum actually in comparison to the rest of the herd. I wonder if this might be her first calf. Oh wow. What a tender moment to witness.
Oh, still want some more. So milk is vital for elephant calves. It's a big world out here. There's a lot to take in and it's quite hot. So always good to have some milk to keep you going. Stacy, I'm so happy. Elephants on Sunset Safari, up close and personal, a little one getting its fix for the day of mom's milk. Absolutely gorgeous moment. <laughs> and another one pushing through the quarries. Oh, this is just amazing. They're in a pretty thick area at the moment, so we're lucky we're getting a little gap at all. They're right on the edge of one of the little dry riverbeds. But the plants definitely don't see this riverbed as dry. We see that there's no water on the top. There's definitely a water table that's fairly high because there'll be water below the surface. So it's keeping all the plants going, and you can see it's quite a thick area. Tambuti trees. Oh, somebody's breaking a tree. It must be quite an extensive herd because that noise came from right down in the riverbed. Lots of bush willows and things around as well and definitely the quarries, that pop of green. Oh, we're trying the other side now. My goodness, this is a thirsty cough. My mammary glands don't actually look that big. So I don't, know, I don't know how much milk this female is producing. It could be because the calf is getting a bit older, so it might be getting closer to that time where she starts producing less milk because the calf will, by this age, be drinking water and feeding perfectly fine on its own, <laughs> getting used to that trunk. Oh, it's sniffing at the other elephants. Oh, Linda Poli, I was super excited to hear that you were wearing your lucky elephant shirt this morning. It is definitely a very lucky elephant shirt, so I think you should wear it more often. Definitely wear it more often. That little one doesn't really know what it wants. It's sniffing at the quarry tree. Maybe because the other elephants are showing interest in that area, maybe it's extending its trunk to try and figure out what exactly they're showing interest in there. Is it the grass? Is it the base? I doubt it's the quarry itself, so maybe it's just trying to figure out what exactly they are doing. It's the best way for a little one to learn, learn from the older ones. You might also find that it might be gathering some important information on each of those two youngish elephants that are with it such a powerful sense of smell to pick up on what might be happening in every other elephant around you. Oh, what are you doing little one? <laughs> Not quite sure. Okay. <laughs> you carry on. Go catch up with mum. Oh, they're coming towards the road. We might get an elephant crossing. I'm just shifting slightly in my seat if you can hear some strange noises because now they're moving in right to the side. Oh, I hope they cross the road. You'll probably find that it was nice and cool in that little riverbed during the heat of the day. Now that it's getting to mid-afternoon, they might be braver in terms of taking on the heat. Freddie, yes, it is unfortunately possible for elephant mums to run out of milk before the time of weaning. This usually only happens though if there is a serious problem, something like a severe drought where the mom hasn't been able to have any water at all. That would mean that she can't really produce milk like she should. It can also happen though if the mom is very ill. So her energy and her body is diverted to fighting with her immune system as opposed to as opposed to um, taking that energy to the mammary glands to create milk. On Woodbury Lodge's episode of Destination Safari. I'm so used to views, I forget to mention it sometimes. <laughs>
underfloor heating in the bathrooms, air conditioning, all those luxury items. Dinner is a full three course meal, um, starter, main and dessert. Early morning drive and on that drive you might see some slightly different things, some rare things. You know. Destination Safari, bringing luxury safari travel to the world. Whatever is in this spot, the elephants are definitely quite happy. It looks like we are slowly starting to edge out a little bit again. But they are taking their time, which is really good. It's very important for them to take that time to get everything they need from an area before they move on. Oh, the little one's going to come out. Yay! Oh, that's magical. She's leading the herd. How gorgeous. I want you to just listen to the sounds around us as they're walking out and over the road. See if you can pick up on <laughs> anything other than elephant gas <laughs> and birds. It's amazingly quiet, isn't it? Just the odd feeding sound. Yes, little one, are you so brave? You are walking out on the road on your own. Very impressive, but run to mom quickly. <laughs> that made my day. Nothing to report. Those kudus seem to just be a little bit suspicious of the sounds it was hearing, or sounds it wasn't hearing, rather, and the wind at the other side of that dam wall. Now we are moving towards another dam, Twin Dam, so basically hanging out in the south until we get an opportunity to go across to the hyena den. What is that? pieces, the edges of doors, things like that. As you can imagine, cars take quite a beating out here. 
So if we see stuff like that, we pick them up. Not that anyone's going to be able to reattach it, but we definitely don't want any animal to be eating rubber. So we make sure we pick all those things up if we find it. And then we get a beautiful collection in our car because we forget to take it out of the car. <laughs> so down at Twin Dams, I'm also hoping that we get to see some elephants. We could sit there for a little while. I think that pipe kingfisher might be around. It's always there near the dam. Yesterday I saw a vervet monkey hanging around there as well. So we'll just have to see. Gosh, this wind is very uncomfortable. I imagine if I'm feeling uncomfortable and I don't have to think about potentially being prey out here. I don't have to think about threats. Can you imagine how uncomfortable the animals must be, like those kudu? All right, we're almost at the dam, so I'm gonna send you back over to Steve in Amakala. He's doing some birding. Well, welcome back to Amakala, everybody, and a large bird I haven't put on camera before. Well, there's a couple of them anyway. See them moving through the open area, one on the right, one on the left, with some antelope in the far distance. These are two large bustards, and from this distance, you can kind of see they've got black on the forehead. It's not very easy to see from here, I'm a little bit far off. You can see the black and there's sort of little black flecks on the wing, very brown back. I do believe it to be the denims busted. The distribution map confirms. Uh, the Ludwig's busted is another one um, that also could occur here, but it doesn't have the same darkness on the head and specifically you see that white patch on sort of the breast area on the wing there's a little it's white with little black flecks some would say heavily blotched whereas the Ludwig's busted does not have that they are more more uniformly brown and speckled Very impressive to see these birds flying. Males getting up to an average weight of about eight or nine kilograms. Their habitat as well as the anteating chat. It's open areas, grassland, shrublands. We'll also find them in the Feinbos as well as cultivated fields where they are foraging for insects, small vertebrates such as frogs and lizards and they'll also feed on some vegetable matter. And you love them. Well, I wish we could get a bit closer, but unfortunately we can't. There you can see now a little bit clear, clearer, the white and the black. Definitely not a Ludwig's. Serving a lot of energy by walking along the ground to feed. When they do fly, it does appear to be very cumbersome.
Oscar, someone by the name of Denim. I don't know who he was. I can try and find out who Mr. Denim was. Otis Otis Denhami was the first first name in 1826. Dixon Demon Denham was a British military officer and colonial administrator, 1786 to 1828. Lieutenant Colonel Dixon Denham. You can often find it in the scientific name. This is called Neotis Denhami. Often when you find a very strange species name, it's often got to do with the person who discovered them or found them or identified it. So standing 110 centimeters, the male. Female, much smaller at 85. She weighs half of what he does. Hello Steve in the UK, I'm glad you're enjoying these views. It's such an uncommon name, isn't it Steve? Never met anyone by the name of Steve before. <laughs> nice to meet more Steves. You can hear an ant eating chat calling. Some lovely grassland species would be found through here litany of wild flowers and take me some time to wrap my head around. Okay, well, we're going to carry on and send you over to test with something exciting at the dam. Something so exciting at the dam. We're in the far northeastern side of Juma and we've got two young lions. It looks like two young males. They're sitting in the shade, panting heavily, huge bellies, and their beds look like they've had a drink. I don't know who they are. I think we're going to have to get closer before we try and even figure that out, because it's really tough to tell, but they've chosen the only little spot of shade very wisely at a dam called Biffles Hook Dam. Look at the expanse of that. Impressive, isn't it? Wow. They do stand out, I suppose, being in the shade. They look like a very large log on the edge of the water. Khaled actually spotted them from quite a distance away. Look at that, staring at us now. What are you guys looking at? <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the young sub-adult male lions that would be around the area. There are so many prides and so many different lion dynamics unfolding at the moment that I don't really know. I mean, immediate instinct, maybe young Nkuhuma lions, but let's get a bit closer and see. 
you know, once they've started moving off there, we'll go and see if we can catch up and then we might be able to see some of their individual characteristics. And they deem the voice in my ear absolutely right. They don't look like they're fans of the weather at the moment. It is quite warm and it's even warmer for them with bellies that big. So I think they chose a little spot where they're half sheltered by the dam wall from the wind and some shade to keep them cool. Michelle, you're most welcome. I'm so excited. We're gonna move closer. This was kind of the first spot and the first view. Well, actually, Gerrit spotted them from back there, but this is the first spot where we could actually show you. So, let's move forward and see if we can see them in some sunlight. Hopefully see some characteristics on the face. What I mean when I say looking for characteristics, the different lions obviously go through a lot in their lives and through all of those adventures, they get scars on their faces. Some of them have very distinctive shapes to their faces, their eyes, their noses, there might be a whole wealth of things, maybe a chipped tooth, little pieces of tattered ear, anything like that could help us distinguish between individual lions and we know that they might belong to a particular pride. So if we can identify the lions, we can identify the pride that they come from. Oh, we are moving and there's a big, big, big lioness too. Who are you? Hello. Size-wise, I mean, I haven't seen the Nkuhuma pride in so long. That's the pride that also used to be on Juma quite a lot. Now they've moved further east. Quite a long history in the northern Sabi Sands of that pride. But the last time I saw those youngsters was a long time ago. So they were a lot smaller. So I actually don't know. That's the lioness you can see walking. There's the sub-adult male behind her taking a break. And they've definitely had something to eat. Going to find some more shade, perhaps. Came down to the water's edge for a drink and now retreating to a catnap spot. Oh, something's just run through. Beautiful, beautiful young male. So that was also a thought that we had. I know some people are saying it might be in Bali lions. That was a thought that we had. That was Harit's suggestion as well, because we were chatting about the prides that have youngish males. The Nkuhumas definitely do, the Mbali's might. I don't know about the Torchwood Pride, so these are all different prides that you would find within the northern Sabi Sands. Uh, honestly, I mean, I wouldn't know. I'm going to rely on all of you for this today, because I don't know which lines these are. So if you can help, please do help us, and we'll try and get a better view for them as well. Not everyone gets excited to hear a leopard chuff, spot a pangolin, or see a real impala rut. But if you are wild about the wild, you can become part of a community of like-minded nature lovers and share authentic wildlife experiences with the world. Join the Explorers Club and you will also enjoy the many benefits that come with it too. Wild with Explorers, it's in your nature.
so the lions are on the move I just I want you to have a look at this young male at the back watch how he's walking his belly is so enormous I don't think I've ever seen a young male lion with a rounder belly while he's walking <laughs> My goodness, whatever they ate, I think he had three quarters of it on his own. It's too good. <laughs> his whole body is swaying from the weight of his belly when he's walking. <laughs> oh, he's had a really good day, a really good one. That is brilliant to see. For a young male lion, all he wants in life right now is a massive meal, enough water and probably some company. I think he's got it all sorted just in the last 24 hours. Wow. <laughs> so I still don't know who they are. I know that the Talamati Breakaway Pride, so if you've been watching the last few days, the Pride of Lions that we've been seeing, one lioness and five sub-adults. They normally hang out with the very big male lion that Trish had this morning, the S8 male or the Mbali male. I know that there are young males within that group of sub-adults, but I don't know if they'd come this far east. We're almost on the eastern boundary of Juma. I've never seen that pride here. Oh my word, that belly. I actually can't get over that. Both of them are enormous. Wow. <laughs> okay, back to IDing. So I don't know who they are yet. We haven't really had a chance to look at their faces, which makes it a little bit sad. At least if you can look at the face, that's usually where they get a lot of distinctive scars because of the whale's feet. They don't have very good table manners. So getting bellies that big means you have to fight for your food, even with your family. So they tend to smack each other and they get these little scars and scratches on their faces. And that can really help us out. <laughs> we need bellies walking away. I can barely even see them anymore. Okay, they're still coming down the road, but just off in. I think I'm gonna go try and find a gap. But I really am trying to rack my brain of the different sub-adult males that might be around. All right, I, I do apologize. I believe there is a little bit of a breakup in the picture. We're in a really dense area next to a little riverbed. Things get a little crazy and here sometimes a signal, so it can be a bit challenging. I don't think we're going to find... Oh, actually, we might find a gap there. That's not a bad plan. So, yes, I am sorry if there's a bit of a breakup in the picture. I can't see them anymore. Annalie, they have had a brilliant Sunday lunch. The other day, I thought I saw full lines. These are fuller. They've done a spectacular job. I wonder if they're in the shade there. I'm gonna try and go through here, actually. Now, it is fairly long grass, so I'm gonna take it slow because we definitely don't wanna drive into a log or anything. Let's take it slow. There's somewhere in here on the left. You can see how dense it is in front of us. So we definitely want to be careful of going over something we shouldn't. Oh, it's nice and in the shade. I'm pretty sure that's what they're looking for. With bellies that big, I can't imagine these lions want to move far at all. I think they've probably already found a patch of shade somewhere here. I'm going to try through here and see. Have you seen them walk through here yet, Chad? Okay. Yeah, somewhere in the shade of maybe that big Gwari tree. Hello, Gwari. Are you looking for a cuddle? branch there. Nadine, please will you repeat that question? I'm sorry, it happened to break up a little bit as you were talking. Right, I don't know what this is going to be like in the grass. There we go. Oh, Charlotte, that's a really good question. Yes, 100% having a belly Thank 
you. Um, having a belly that big can 100% hinder these lions if they do become in danger. Also, don't worry, this bush willow that I'm going under is between the toes, so it's going to pop back up. I won't go over something that won't pop back up. Um, yes, it will slow them down immensely. Obviously, their natural instinct is going to kick in, right? So they're going to be trying to put on some speed. They're going to move away if they need to. They'll fight if they need to, but they will be slower, and you'll probably find their reflexes will be a bit slower as well just because it kind of takes it out of them. When you've got that much food in your belly, it kind of drains some of your energy. It's really hard to digest red meat, and so that's probably gonna slow them down. This is the last place we saw them, was just behind this very big green bush, which is called a guari. If they're lying in there, I'm wildly impressed <laughs> because we cannot see even a smidge of them. I'm just looking for movement at this point, so I can't go further forwards here because there's a log in front of me, which I'm definitely not going to try and take out. It's right there in front of us. There you can see it's sticking out of the grass. I'm definitely not going to try and drive over that. But I don't see them in this patch of shade, so they might have given us the slip. Or their bellies are so big that they climbed into a thicket, fell over, and they just can't get back up. <laughs> so we can't even try and see them. But we're going to try our best to find them again for you. Hopefully we can also try and figure out who they are. But we'll send you over to Trishala in the meantime to see what she is up to. I am being like all the other animals and I'm near a drainage so I can protect myself from the wind. And then we came across some banded mongoose but uh, they were they were very, very quick. But then they all started to like follow each other down there and it looked like they were going on a hike, like they were just a group of scouts. It was very cute, but very often with mongoose, you don't know how big the group is. So if you just park off and wait a couple minutes, maybe more will emerge. They become very, very curious. They are extremely curious animals. So maybe we'll see a little dark head popping out, looking right at us. That would be very nice. Anyway, that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for as we are sitting here. But we have been sitting here for the past few minutes, and nothing so far. But hey, I've got patience, pants. I do. We don't see banded mongoose, and we don't get sightings of banded mongoose too often here in Juma. They move very quickly and they're really not used to to people very much. Or rather, I think they don't like people very much, maybe. But they have taken over urban areas in South Africa. They'll still react very quickly to you, but you know, if you're in a parking lot or something, um, I remember at work, uh, in Durban where I grew up I would sit in the parking lot and if you just waited the banded mongoose that lived there would come out and play but as soon as you opened the car door and got out then they'd all start running. Sometimes they run underneath your car door. They're really nice and big. Much bigger than our usual variety, the dwarf mongoose. Dwarf mongoose are about 200 to 350 grams. And these big ones, the banded mongoose, can be up to like a kg. Maybe yeah, a kg and a half even. So nice and big. But clearly not showing themselves for us today. This was actually round two of seeing them. Round one was when we go went through the dip on the other side could very well be the same group but it seems like um, they have left us that's okay we can keep on going we did a little bit of a loop I decided that the plait in my hair was making my cap too tight <laughs> so I've un undid them Gia, you'd like to know if mongoose and, and squirrels are related? Uh, no, so they're in completely different um, 
families. even orders so different families not even a thing because they're in different orders so squirrels are rodents they're in the order rodentia and mongoose are carnivores so they're in the order carnivora so squirrels are more closely related to other rodents like um love how my brain went straight to rats but I mean it's the one we all know rats mice bats and mongoose are related to other mongoose obviously and meerkats so we saw them down here as well let's see a mongoose are also considered um, feely forms so cat like animals not felines but cat like animals and a whole feely form get ready for your daily dose of african wildlife magic be enchanted by the intimate moments shared by the animals as they drink play and interact in their natural habitat with our daily wildlife videos, you'll experience the thrill of safari adventures without ever having to leave your seat. Let the wild adventure unfold right before your eyes. AFRICAM. Always live, always wild. So two species that, male and female, will both have horns. It's the only, the eland is the only Tragolaphus species whereby the male and female both have horns. Now they have evolved from a very similar place. But considering that eland are grazers and more open area specialists it's a benefit for the females to have horns as they use them as a form of predator defense especially not just for themselves but to defend their youngsters against lions
success. Kharat's eyes are just too good. They are hiding in the shade in the bush off the road. And I think they're honestly just too exhausted to move any further. It's so hot, their bellies are ridiculously large. And they found a spot where they can just follow the shade for a bit. Now we're still not quite sure who they are. I am a little bit more certain now of who it might be, but I would like your confirmation. And I'm basing it purely on this young male that is facing us. So you can see his face really nice. He's got a couple of scars just on his nose going up to his eyes. So quite distinctive spots there. And that, oh, moving his face. <laughs> that combined with the fact that when he opened his mouth just now to keep panting, he had a chipped bottom right canine, makes me feel like this might be one of the young males from the Talamati Breakaway Pride. Now, if you don't know who the Talamati Breakaway Pride is, they all used to be the Talamati Pride. This was quite a few years ago. They moved on to Juma, and we started seeing them around the property a lot. We saw two predominant prides, the Talamati Pride, which was further west, and the Nkuhuma Pride, which was further east. And they've actually taken turns being the dominant pride holding territory over Juma. And then three of the lionesses broke away from that Talamati pride and became the Talamati breakaway pride. Now those three lionesses moved off and mated with that very big male lion that Trishala had on the show this morning. And this young male and the one lying at the back are potentially a result of that. So if it is the Talamati breakaway pride, then yes, that is their father. However, if it's not them, then I'm really, I, I don't know who it is, <laughs> but I think it's part of the Talamati Breakaway Pride. Now they actually don't spend as much time on Juma, or they didn't until recently. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. So when they moved away from the Pride, they moved further north into the property north of Juma. And that's where they spent most of their time. But now the main Prides, the Talamati Pride and the Nkuhuma Pride, don't spend as much time on Juma. The Nkuhuma Pride more than the Talamati Pride. And now the Talamati Breakaway Pride, which is potentially some of these ones, they have been moving further and further. And if this is them, also again, please let me know if you can help out and confirm that it might be them. They have been moving really far, and this will be the furthest east I've ever seen them. It didn't immediately dawn on us as an option because they don't normally come this far east. But that being said, I suppose, <coughs> I'm trying to think. Didn't you and I have them when they were much smaller on a termite mound off of Cheetah Cut Line? We did, so we actually had them on the eastern boundary. I take it back, this is not the furthest east they've been. My bad. My fault there. My brain decided not to remember that one until right now. <laughs> so we have seen them further east than this. But it is interesting to see them this far east regardless because coming this far east they've got probably more of a chance of running into the other prides of lions. In this particular part, the lion prides that might come in, there's probably four or five different prides of lions or at least Actually, that's without males. If we had to count males as well, it would be probably closer to 10 different potential interactions with other lions in this area. Far northeastern corner of Juma. I think he's so hot that he actually can't really even keep his head up. Look how he's tilted his chin upwards. So he's probably trying to get all that nice cool wind over the, the bottom of his body where his hair is a little thinner. Judy, it's crazy, right? Their bellies are so big. Even the lioness, look at her. <coughs> Sorry, please excuse my coughing. I think I swallowed a bug. I breathed it in. They've had a very decent meal. It makes me very happy to see them like this, you know, very big bellies. It can't be comfortable for them to have gorged themselves to the extent. But it is good to know that they are eating really, really well. Michelle S, thank you very, very much. You are agreeing with me and saying you think the Talamati breakaways, or at least three of them. So that makes me feel better. That makes me feel a lot better that we might then 
well, I might not have such a terrible brain. <laughs> okay, so two of the five subadults here then. So the one lioness, she is the remaining lioness of the Talamati Breakaway Pride. The two other lionesses, unfortunately, did not make it. And so she is in charge of teaching five sub-adult lions how to hunt and keeping them all safe and fed. She's clearly done a good job with these two. Does make me wonder where the others are, but you probably find these three have come to the water without the others. Maybe because they ate more than them, so they need the water more than the other three sub-adults. It also makes sense as to why that big male has moved from this morning. So when Trishala left him this morning, by the time another person got there, he had moved. They couldn't find him, and we found his tracks on the boundary coming in this direction. I wonder if he's come to investigate what they might have killed, come to find the pride. Maybe he'll pop up in this area a little bit later when it's cooler. What are you listening for, boy? Maybe the other lions. So within this group, it's this big lioness. There are three sub-adult males and two sub-adult females, as far as I remember. So we're missing one sub-adult male, and it's probably the one with the limp. We discovered that he had a limp about two, three days ago. Three days ago. So he's probably with these sub-adult lionesses, and they are, I'm guessing they would be somewhere close to wherever they've had all of this food. young male closest to us is actually, it almost looks like he's struggling to breathe, he's eaten so much. So he's trying to pant excessively just to try and keep himself cool while he's working through that red meat. We're going to stick around and see if we can gather any more information and maybe find the others. And we'll send you over to Rexon, who's spending time with elephants. Great, lovely. Thank you so much. Um, we are joined the Antelope Dam. This is the paradise of uh, elephants. Elephant likes this area due to the water, a quality of water. And of course, you can see what elephant love the most. It's a mud, mud bathing, which is more important. Time and again, these elephants feel more comfortable to be in the area because it's a huge benefit also from the mud. Mud, it might be, mud will be carried on the body system in order to really create another layer. If they move out in the area, they cannot get easy a hit. And of course, you tend to see elephant have ticks that parasite in the body of an elephant. That is more important to suffocate all these ticks because sometimes ticks might cause diseases. An elephant know that, look how young that uh, little elephant walking there, it's caked in mud. That, uh, it does have huge benefit. Moving around in the area quite a lot, uh, I mean, getting more ticks around. We are around the camp here at Echo Training Safari Life. You see these uh, elephant that are really facing the other side of the camp due to the western part. I mean, it's such amazing. These elephant here, they tend to be really feel more comfortable to be moving in and out in human habitat very easily. We tend to see them loving the area. Due to the water, of course, and a big canopy of trees along this drainage line feeding level, um, dam itself that's raising the elephant, they need benefits of huge trees. And also water, as I said,
was pretty epic. <laughs> he even got up for us. He is definitely looking for the rest of the lionesses. Apologies everyone, it seems we may have lost Rex and it is definitely a challenge being out in the middle of the bush. Trying to find good signal isn't always the easiest, but it's a challenge we'll gladly take if it means we get to be out here and share the magic. Hopefully we find him again soon, or we'll find some signal soon at least, so that he can continue showing you all of the beautiful things from Pridelands. On this side, not much has changed. I think the lines are actually so hot that they don't really even want to move much. I think the idea here is to sleep for as long as possible and just reposition every now and then when it's necessary. But other than that, very minimal movement. Just ear flicking and the occasional tail movement. And a lot of heavy panting. And we're having a conversation at the moment about where we think the others might be. Now in my mind, I don't think that the lions are in that little riverbed that runs down from the dam because if that was the case, the rest of the pride, if they were there, I feel like these ones would have gone straight down from the dam wall into the river itself, into that riverbed. And they didn't. They were in quite a straight line. Maybe coming to the shade, but I doubt it. I think this is just a stop off along the way. I think maybe the, the rest of the pride might be a little bit further if we carried on straight from where these lines are, a little further down the road. And hopefully the big male might be around with them. But for now, I suppose we won't know unless we actually manage to find them. So fingers crossed, maybe a bit later, we'll figure out where they are. Those sounds just go straight through you. I love that stretch of the back foot. It's such a lion thing when you see all of those toes spreading out. Sometimes it's the only movement you see other than the flicking ears and tails, just a stretch of the feet. And 
The young males literally haven't moved. At least the lioness has changed sides a couple of times now. But I do think what we are going to do is maybe head around to the other side, see if we can have a nice look at the other young male's face. And then from there, try and put the puzzle pieces together, figure out where the other lions are, look around the area for some tracks. Maybe there'll be hyenas or vultures that might lead us in the right direction too. But either way, it is a little strange. I feel very weird seeing just the two young males with her and not the rest of the sub-adults. It feels like it's not complete. So I would like to find the others if we possibly can. It is going to be a bit of a challenge either way, so we might not find them. There's a decent possibility we won't, because it is such a thick area with so many riverbeds that we might not be able to access. Great! It is wonderful here. Very sunny, windy, and a little bit of chilly. You don't know what to do. Of course, there's raising the elephant. You can see that uh, pretty much they are playing. Some of them, they don't even get inside the water. They just put their feet in because the weather itself, it is really changing quite a lot in the area. It tend to be like a very windy and freezing kind of. There's, uh, we are here a little bit more to the west where it's a little bit more open enjoying energy from the sun as elephant doing the same thing and also uh, giving one another a little bit of entertainment developing all the skills i mean trying to um playing fighting and all that try to keep the company of everybody more important within the structure of the breeding herd of each female it's unbelievable you tend to see that everyone is happy with one another as you know that uh, these guys are family orientated that's raising all the time there will be no allowance of age or a single member of the head to get uh, separated it's something that uh, it will might cause a very a big impact on this whole uh, society or whole head of the elephant itself as a family orientated so it has to be keeping individual happy keep information of everyone around across the uh, area if they all are related once they're moving in, in the same area that's raising scent mark vocalization is more important also keep the social bond together and also keep the company of family orientated all the time and able to stick with one another unbelievable animal look at that the young male is really scratching itself against the tree and they're playing all these um, skills of fighting only the adult elephant you won't see them playing this kind of a fight the adult elephant are all the time the very serious um, elephant they don't even play they move graze move around in the area and make sure that uh, they move in the area where they can benefit from females and also from viability of uh, grass, pigs, and water. Young males, all the time, you tend to see them doing this play fight. I've seen two male elephant fighting, serious fighting. I don't want to come across with it again. They destroy quite a lot in environment, trees and everything. And trumpeting, heck, serious fighting, and it is very scary to see that. Oh, look at this female coming deeply in water. We'll see how it's going to work. It is beautiful here. A perfect light of these. Uh, Shots are unbelievable. You can see two heads that are facing one another. And I believe all these heads here, they belong to one family. Most of the time when the elephant approaches the water, if there's uh, other head that doesn't belong to them, they'll wait until they move and get in. Or they might really uh, given space. The other elephant will be on the other side and the other that John will be on the other side. They don't mix up in most cases. 
due to the um, hierarchy within the matriarch a system works on the elephant itself because once they get together they start to compete with that there are so much territorial or defensive from their own head same as uh, cattle same as goats a cattle head they don't want to come across with uh, another head that just belongs to them they start to fight same as buffalo they do the same I'm really loving this, uh, it's unbelievable here, yeah? beautiful. This species, the might tell, they know everything right now with weather and what's going on in the area, which area they're gonna be moving. They all have that, all the plans of a day. <coughs> if it's gonna be uh, cold at night, they choose a certain area to go in. And remember, having high population of an elephant of course, in nature, it will drive other species off into the area. The reason why I'm saying this, look at how the activities of an elephant in the area. They are really doing quite a lot on the acacia trees and debarking. Do you love relaxing at a waterhole with the sights and sounds of Africa all around you? Well, we have some really exciting news for you. From August 1st, AfriCam is joining forces with Wild Earth to bring the majesty of Africa right into your living room with nine incredible new waterhole cameras from across South Africa and Kenya. Get ready to embark on a new journey. This is Live at the Waterhole. desiccated offer the most intimate insight into the lives of the continent's beloved wildlife wherever you are in Africa the scenic majesty will take your breath away in hopefully things clear up in the bush there sometime soon but on this side, come to the lion search. We have left the three very, very, very lazy lions that are, that are far too full to move any further in this heat. Can't blame them. But now we're down in the riverbed because while we were sitting with them, we heard birds alarm calling like crazy. It sounded like Franklins, crested Franklins to be precise. And they were absolutely panicking. We heard it once, 
we thought, okay, maybe they're there. Then we heard it again, even louder, and we thought, yeah, they might be there. And now we've heard it a third time coming from the direction of that beautiful big jackalberry tree that you can see popping out of this riverbed. So they're not actually, that noise anyway, the alarm calling was not as close to the dam as, as you would think. But we're going to take a drive down this road just now. For now though, we're just trying to listen to try and narrow it down a bit. So where we are at the moment in the dry riverbed is in the shade and I have to believe, I have to believe that the lions will want to be doing the same thing. Now we haven't heard any more alarm calling since we've been down here. We heard it once when we stopped and now it has stopped as well. So what we're doing is we're parked in the shade. I've had a walk up and down and we're listening. I've gone a little bit up the riverbed, a little bit down the riverbed, looking for tracks, listening for sounds, any signs, because I'm not just going to drive in if I don't know where the lions are. No point in off-roading if there's not a sighting. But now we're here, and I have to believe this is where the lions would want to be. Nice and relaxed, comfortable in the shade. And also, soft riverbed. So the dam is far up to the right. We are actually going to be going down to the left because that's where we heard Franklin's alarm calling. So if you missed that chat earlier, while we were sitting with the three very fat lions, we heard Franklin's alarm calling. We heard it once and we thought, eh, decent. Heard it twice, thought maybe we should check. Heard it a third time and we decided we're definitely going down there. So that's what we're listening for and that is where we are going to be going. Straight down that road you can see. Wish us luck. Hopefully we found them. But we'll send you over to Trish who is at the Hyena Den. Get excited. Aren't we just the luckiest? But we're going to make this very quick because we just arrived here at the den on Little Gowry. And this little one is out. It's June's little cub. But you know the deal. We're quite far away, but you know the deal. We don't hang around. Uh, or we don't stick around when there's no mum around. And I don't see June at all. So we can do a little bit of a loop here. Um, but also I told you, Wendy, my vehicle doesn't do too well. So at least I got to show you little cubby because... Yeah, sorry for some picture break up there if you were experiencing it. It's a quite a difficult spot for this vehicle. Um, but at least we got to see the cub. But now we need to leave because June is not around. So let's go. I will warn you. She might experience a little bit of breakup again. There we go. <laughs> I'll send you over, over to Pridelands. They've got some elephants and we're going to make our way around. If I see June, then we'll stay. Great, thank you. We, we have one young elephant. It's having a little bit of uh, strange behavior, but it's uh, left. It's all like, uh, you know, when the elephant, young male, think he's stronger than anything, he tried to impress the rest of the head that is stronger. He'd like to charge the vehicle. Oh, look at this, unbelievable. The majority of this uh, elephant, yeah, most of them are young males that are really, he joins at the waterhall and look like it's beautiful because all of them they might be entertaining females might be living but the males you know that uh, they like playing like swimming they might take time of course in the water around here and play quite a lot it's not all about fighting it's all about uh, happy about the company of one another it's uh, unbelievable these guys they love swimming also, but you see how it's going to work. But especially if all elephants leave, the breeding herd leaves, they might stay here and do the mating, practicing mating, practicing fighting all the time. It's, it's entertainment that they do.
<coughs> Bless me. Atresa, really loving the elephant sighting here. It's beautiful. Unbelievable. I love when the elephant really behave like the way they are. Such a very impressive animals. Come in close to the vehicle and just walk away. Showing the respect. Uh, look at these two there. Look like a female. The females happy with one another. What do you saw look like? It's all about uh, their welcoming and happy with one another. It's not a play, it's more or less hugging. Elephants are such amazing species. Of course, what we do in most cases when we are happy, elephants do the same. They can use the trunk to hug one another, play with one another, but especially if there's something that they have achieved around when they move, walk around maybe it could be a really a one of the female have youngster and celebrating i've seen where elephant where one of the female wants to give birth and surrounded the female protect that particular female they were trumpeting and all that i didn't understand what's going on but it's how actually elephant really accepting the new baby to join on the head itself and after that when the baby and when the female give birth, they will walk together with the female. There will be no more celebrating. It will be quiet and move around in the area without making any shouting noise around. It's very windy, it's very dusty here. Sometimes it's created by elephant, but uh, lovely because the area, oh, these are all young males there playing. The one more to the left looks like a female from the distance. But they're all young males. All of them are young males, and one image of female low. The nature to do so. Giving and also are really accepting to be in a company. Now, how elephant can really. That is also skills. Going up a bank like that, what can you do? From here to Lobodam, we'll send you to Trishala and enjoy the sighting in Juma. With the hyena den, but that little one has grown so, so much. That was just lovely to see him. It's actually some spots showing, well, quite a few spots in the back. Of course, it's still a little dark. I hope that you are able to see the cub because I know we were experiencing a bit of breakup. And it gives me hope that maybe, sorry, that's just my game drive radio. Let me turn that off. That maybe June will come around sometime and we'll get to spend a good amount of time at the den like we used to. That would be lovely. But for now, to the west. We are out of this property, little gallery, and we are back on Juma's southern boundary. Now, despite the sunshine, it's actually quite cool. I mean, I considered putting my jacket on right at the beginning of the drive. So this has a few things, a few implications. Maybe that means there'll be predator movement earlier than we usually experience it. It's actually a very pleasant temperature when the wind is not blowing. But I don't know, I have a feeling of predator movement quite early. So this is a good place to be. Also, oh, it's like a catch 22 because the wind, what it does is it, so when an animal steps and it creates a track, the edges of the track are very nice and crisp and so they're very nice to see, very easy to see and you can tell that they're nice and fresh but with the wind the wind kind of rounds off those edges so it may be more difficult to age the track but the wind also keeps the road looking pretty smooth like at the moment I don't see any tracks so if we do see tracks you can be certain that they're going to be fresh 
especially if they're nice and crisp, they're fresh tracks. All these things help us to judge the, the age of a track, which then helps to focus our movements. Do we straight away follow the tracks as they are, or should we predict where that animal would be? Ah, Catherine? Catherine, you say seeing little June bug made you so happy. It made me so happy too. And also when when I came into the road at the den, it looked empty. There was nothing. And then I did a loop round, nothing. And then I said, let me just check on the side because a lot of the time the adults, they'll sit away from the den. So I thought, let me do another loop just to check if I can find an adult in the in the grass and then that little head popped up such a treat but it's for that exact reason that we don't stick around at the den when adults are not around because hyena cubs are so so curious that if they see you coming along they're gonna pop out and want to investigate and the problem is that if another predator comes and visits the den or sees the den smells the den and the cub is out as a result of being curious of us we can't do anything to protect it. Its mother is not there or any other adult is not there. So we don't sit at the den when there isn't any adult. But it made me feel like it's not a myth, you know? <laughs> they are around. Um, oh, I'm very sorry. I think uh, we we may have had a black screen or something there for a moment. Sorry about that. I think it's this road as well. It's very, very corrugated. So I was saying that I'm in a bit of I'm in two minds. I'm really having a feeling about the southern area. Now over on this side is Little Gauri, where we had the hy where the hyena den is. Uh, well, there and to the left, and then over back on this side, that's Juma, and so we are right on the southern boundary now. Now we can't go into Little Gauri just you know for fun. We were very lucky that they allowed us to come through for the hyena den. But this particular junction is an area where I've seen Shudulu. The leopardess, the first leopardess that I saw uh, on drive, it was what, four days ago now? The first leopardess. So she, she often uses this area to cross into Juma, out of Juma, into Juma, uh, into Little Gauri, out of Little Gauri. So a good place to look for trucks, of which, of course, there are none. But it's okay. It's a nice, a nice thought, you know. Maybe I just drive along here and she pops out. Wouldn't that be lovely? Did you hear? The schools are out. Yup, it's time for the school holidays and Wild Earth is celebrating with special content just for kids. Join us from the 21st to the 25th of August for five days of fun. Our guides will be taking on a number of survival tasks and together we'll learn how to survive in the wilderness, build things and have fun in the wild too. Wild Earth Kids, it's in your nature.
welcome back to the lion search. So far, no more success. It's all right though, we're working on it. We'll get there, hopefully, fingers crossed. I've braided my hair. This in itself should be good luck. <laughs> so we're taking a very snail paced safari at this point for a very good reason. Okay, two very good reasons. One, there's never really any reason to rush through the bush. And two, it took us two attempts to spot those lions lying in a pretty open area earlier. We're in a much thicker area now. I don't wanna miss them. Now the good news is we do have another vehicle that's come to join us. He is looking for a very big male lion and we're kind of hoping the big male is gonna be with the rest of the pride, the other sub-adults. So together, joining forces, we can cover more ground and hopefully find you the rest of the lions and find us the rest of the lions because we enjoy spending time with them. Uh, we've done all the way down that riverbed where we heard the alarm calling. No more alarm calling. Any tracks of see any lions. We've come on the left side of the lines. We're now on the right of the lines, the actual three that we had. And we're coming back around and we'll come out almost just below them, almost back where we went, back into the river. So we're hoping that doing this, we're gonna cover a bit more ground, find them. Then we can also do the road above. We can do the road further past the riverbed and we can last but not least do the Eastern boundary, which is gonna be on our right hand side. So there's not that many roads left for us to cover. The biggest challenge of being in this area is you can see how thick it is. So we're in a seep line. It means there's a lot of silver cluster leaf, this grayish green and a lot of African wattle and a lot of quarries and a lot of bush willows. There's also a lot of tall grass. So it's gonna be a challenge. We're gonna take it slow and hopefully we'll be successful. We're gonna carry on and we shall send you over to Trishala to see what she's up to. We can, but try. I hope that she manages to find the rest of the lions. Yeah, I'm still looking for tracks. I mean, I'm not saying especially that I'm looking for Shadulu, but I do have Shadulu on my mind. Decisions, decisions. So we're now on the main road. This main road is called Triple M. And it heads right towards the Sabi Sand Gate. It's a surprisingly um, productive road considering that it's a very very main road so even though we have other access roads to get to the lodge and things like that those are not roads used by you know like big time delivery vehicles like delivering fuel or something like that uh, unless they're going to a particular lodge but this road this is a this is a proper main road the triple M is Mala Mala Main and this cuts like right through the sabi sand. And it's surprisingly productive. Oh, Wendy? That. That's up here for a moment. <laughs> up, Wendy. It's fine, you can be with me while I check the car. cars okay um. okay so, so Wendy has a has a she likes to make quite an appearance wherever she goes she likes to to be known and so sometimes that means she likes to arrive in a cloud of exhaust fumes 
but there so usually you know like if you your revs are low or something then she starts doing that but uh, there she was just Wendy was just doing it because she felt like it if you didn't know who Wendy is this is Wendy this vehicle's name is Wendy but it seems like it's just some harmless exhaust stuff. Oh, Fanny! <laughs> I love this question. You'd like to know how my parents feel about me working in the bush. My dad loves it. He really, really loves it. He likes to tell his friends about it. Um, some, and he always asks me for animal videos and things like that. So my dad's a teacher and uh, he makes, puts them in a little clip to show his classes. <laughs> it's very cute. My mum, on the other hand, loves it in theory, but hates it when I tell her or show her videos of elephants near me or anything like that. She hates it. Um, and I'm not sure if she went through with it or not, but she said that she was going to write to the big bosses and tell them that they should put a cage around the car because it's so unsafe. And if I tell her that I'm near, like, oh, look at this elephant or look at this leopard, then she says, mustn't come near you. Yeah. But I think they, are, they, they love it. I think they also knew that it suited me from a time I was very little I was interested in getting into the dirt and the plants and touching all the insects and all those kinds of things so they knew that it they knew that it was meant for me I think at first they were a little bit skeptical and it was kind of like yeah okay do that till you get a real job kind of thing <laughs> But now, yeah, now I've built something out of it. And uh, I think they're quite happy. Uh, the, so my and I mean, this is a bit of like back history, but anyway, in terms of uh, Iconic African mammals live large in humanity's imagination. Across the continent, fascinating mammals have evolved to fill every conceivable niche. Their struggles for survival, natural and anthropogenic, mirror those of wildlife the world over. Because they are so beguiling, Africa's mammals have become ambassadors for the Earth's remaining wilderness. Apologies, everyone. Seems there might be a little bit of a problem with Wendy there. I'm hoping we're going to be able to fix it very soon. In the meantime, welcome back to the sea plant. Very thick area, very long grass. Believe it or not, this grass might actually even be taller than those lion's bellies when they're on their sides, which is hard to beat, but it's doable, I suppose, with very long grass. <laughs> and this is where we are, it's long grass. It's thick, 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 and it's going to be quite tough to spot these lions. <laughs> So we're now kind of completing the loop. We're about to come out on that same road where we had the three lions earlier coming down from the dam. And we were kind of thinking, based on where those noises were, based on the general sense of direction of those lions, that either they were going to be down in the riverbed where we stopped in the shade there and showed you that big jackalberry tree and where they might be, or down here on the left, because this is another little part of that same riverbed, the little dry river that runs up. It's actually a tributary. It's a little bit of a smaller one that leads into a bigger one. 
but so far nothing and in fact we're in the area now where the beautiful leopardess the queen of juma the lovely Miss Lamba. this is where she's had den sites in the past you will hear the radio is going in the background i don't want to turn it all the way down because we're all working together to try and find the lions but you don't really want to miss anything too important either we're all chatting amongst each other amongst the guides making sure we're all well informed come on lions come on lions Okay, so we are now approaching that road. We're getting pretty close, so soon I'm actually going to chat to one of the guides on because he is now with those three lions. He also, he actually also missed them the first time around. <laughs> and he was just radioing me to ask me where they are and then he spotted them again coming through. <laughs> They're so well hidden despite the fact that they have such huge bellies in the area. Amazing how well these animals can camouflage. Oh, I was really hoping they'll be here. Maybe though what we might have to do if they're not here we can go back to those three lines have a look they're doing them out of I don't want to say moved just repositioned onto their backs or something then we can go back to the dam and head up to the northeastern corner the actual boundary. Oh Kathy Lee Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear you've braided your hair as well. I'm hoping that that is exactly the good luck boost that we need. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Linda Poli's shirt found us the elephants. Maybe your braided hair will find us the lions. Fingers crossed. Braiding fingers, braiding hair. Come on, lions. So the challenging boy. Oh, there's a hyena. Well spotted hat. And I think actually this might be in Gwazi again. How are you moving such large distances? I'm definitely seeing some flies on the top of the head. I'm seeing some pretty distinctive markings as well. Let me know if you agree that this might be the young male spotted hyena from the Juma clan. Yes, I think it is in Gwazi, but please do confirm for me as well if you agree. Looks like it might be. So this is the resilient young male, if it is in Gwazi. Very resilient young male, just coming on three years old. Ah, thank you Shreyas for confirming it is indeed in Gwazi. Okay, so very resilient young male. Literally just over a week ago, this young male was attacked by one of the big male lions. And it actually had him by the head. The head and the neck over his right ear, so the ear closest to us. And it was quite a brutal interaction to be honest it was hard to watch a lot of very loud sounds as usual the clan came in to save the day as they do a very tight-knit community they have each other's backs and the matriarch of the clan actually instigated the bites that got him to release this hyena now him being here this is a very good sign because now if he's around he has been at every carcass in the last while the lions must be some way. Now we're a pretty far distance from where we had in Guazi last night and yesterday. So this is the same hyena that was at the base of that very big tree where the leopardess had her kill for three days. It's that same leopardess I was talking about that had a den site close by. This is all coming into very tight knit little bows. I love it. Neat little circles. And this young hyena seems to be cruising around covering distance and really just coming into his own but the fact that he's sniffing around i wonder if this is potentially where the lions have been the last day or two did you know that the wild earth team makes weekly behind the safari content <laughs> would you like to get to know the wild earth family better 
see how we live. This is Igor's bedroom. Learn about our production process and see the antics that happen off camera. <laughs> Sign up to be an explorer and you will get access to all this content and more. Hyena is coming a little bit closer, but at the moment he's hidden behind a bush right next to Gert. He's just behind that thicket. You can see some movement. There he's walking off towards the back now. So still looking for scraps as he goes. Very young male, not quite ready to leave the clan yet. So we were chatting a bit about his story earlier. This is in Guazi, if you missed it. He is around about three years old, one of the young males of the Juma clan, and we've been very lucky to catch up with him this week. We were worried about him last week because he got attacked by a pretty big male lion, and it looked quite vicious, and somehow the resilience of a hyena still surprises us when it shouldn't. But I think it's because, you know, we worry. Naturally, we worry. And here he is looking absolutely fantastic, looking for all the scraps from the lion kill. So we're just watching his movements. We're not going to move at the moment because he's nice and relaxed with us. He is feeling nervous about the lions though. And so any movement we make with the vehicle might scare him off because he knows the lions could come back at any point and that movement might, um, might make him feel a bit intimidated. I love the movement of a predator's head behind the grass. <laughs> Just the little top of the fluff sticking out. Oh, what did you get, boy? A hyena snack. Oh, careful, don't choke on it. That was a weird noise. Some form of bone that he crunched on. Quite literally looking for anything he can possibly find. Being such a young male, I don't know how uh, how much hunting he's done on his own, but he's definitely a very good scavenger. He's been at every carcass. Kathy Lee, I wonder if this was the braids actually. Maybe it was to see this gorgeous boy again. Pretty Ngwazi, and you're absolutely right. It doesn't matter what your rank is, the clan will still care about you. So what Kathy Lee's talking about, if you don't know, is that hyenas work on a matriarchal system. 
matriarchal, matriarchal, I don't know. Now I'm confusing myself. But in essence, the females are dominant over the males and they work on a hierarchy. And you are born with your mother's hierarchy. Now Nguazi was born to the lowest ranking female hyena in the clan. Her name is Ribbon, but she is an absolute fan favorite. And so being the lowest ranking, he will be the lowest ranking male in the clan. But regardless of that, the clan looked after him like you can't believe in the attack. And you can still see some of the remnants of the attack there. He's got an open wound on his head that we hadn't actually noticed until Trishala found him and got a nice close-up view to see that wound oozing a bit. But despite the fact that he is a low-ranking hyena, when he was under attack, the clan represented and they came and rescued him, got the lion to release him absolutely brilliant. We're going to stick around and see what he does and we'll send you over to Rexon with some giraffes. Great, uh, lovely. We got this giraffe here. These are kind of attitude. It's where giraffe might spot something that uh, it really we can't see because the giraffe does have a height that have a, a benefit to see something far. You would never know, but it will be good for us to point that direction and head towards the same direction. So actually the other species benefit. If this kind of uh, uh, attitude shows quite a lot, it tells that uh, it might be spotting something. I doubt that it could be um, uh, elephant. It could be something that, uh, of course, he brought his station to look at and see where it's going to. It could be leopard, it could be hyena, it could be lion. You'll never know. <coughs> We're in an open system here at Praland. We could greater Kuga National Park. can be at any time. It could be wild dog, it could be a lion, it could be a leopard that is moving around in the area. But we'll have to confirm from this giraffe. If he turns around and walk away as fast, it means that uh, it might be something that can hunt a giraffe. Of course, it's such amazing. Very windy here. Sometimes the sense of a smell might be disturbed by the dust and also the wind speed. It might be not a great thing, but they will rely on the eyesight most of the time and look at the species. If you look at that white tip, the white uh, color behind the ears, that tells you that uh, the concentration of the giraffe is not around, it's something where it's looking. You know, the reason is a tower is very tall, it's taking signal now. You can see sending waves and tells what's going on. And really, I can tell that uh, it's something that encouraged me to go on that direction and look around. If you don't find, it'll be something that might be disappear. Maybe we might find tracks. We have Morris with us uh, this afternoon. We can uh, really track whatever might be in the area. Before, I mean, it's too late and waste time. Why don't we go and investigate what might be the giraffe seeing on that area? Because definitely we can read that uh, it's something that uh, is sporting. I just look at the direction. It works, it helps me a lot. It's 45 angle that way. So pretty much I'll go with the level and get the direction exactly. You see it's direct from where we are. You see something there. Let's see if we go around, we can benefit. Maybe it's going towards the south, the fence line. You never know. At least uh, we have something that we can read from the giraffe. Oh, great. Thank you so, so much. Yes, it's very exciting. But look like oh, we don't have roads to cut. It takes us far where we might not uh, go in the same direction. It will take us uh, 20 minutes before we drive around into the area. So let's move 
we'll find that there's another road to the other side. And it's coming closer and closer to look on whatever he spotted. But I can't tell at the moment. It could be another female of giraffe. Who knows? Because that can happen. Beautiful call here. Beautiful call. The Red Crescent Coral. See for that. <laughs> yes. Toral display. Toral kind of uh, calling. is that on the neck is that to do that kind of uh, dominance fluffy sort of uh, uh, feathers to show that is a territorial calling it's announcing himself in the area it can get fluffy where at the back it might open up and see the red the red crest that they have at the back unbelievable species we call this species suicide bed sometimes they can fly very high as a territorial display and stay up to date with the latest happenings at wild earth discover what goes on behind the scenes and get a weekly recap of the best moments on the channel he's got it he's got it and he's straight up a tree sign up to be an explorer and receive our newsletter written just for you and sent straight to your inbox every week. Wild Earth Explorers, a club for people who are passionate about nature. Thank you for joining us and have a fantastic morning. Conservation, ready to take your knowledge and skills to the next level? Look no further than the four eco-training courses in Kenya, the ultimate destination for aspiring conservationists and nature enthusiasts. Step into a world of discovery as you join eco-training's renowned courses in the heart of Kenya's Masai Mara. Immerse yourself in the diverse ecosystems of out of Africa, 
guided by our team of expert instructors. From wildlife tracking to bird identification, bushcraft skills to habitat assessment, our comprehensive courses offer you hands-on experiences that will deepen your understanding of the natural world and equip you with invaluable conservation skills. Engage with local communities, learn from their wisdom, and understand the vital role that they play in sustainable conservation. Embark on thrilling field excursions where you'll witness breathtaking landscapes and encounter Kenya's iconic wildlife up close. From the Masai Mara to Amboseli National Park, every moment will be a source of inspiration and wonder. These courses are the perfect way to gain a deep understanding of the African bush, even if you have limited time. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to experience the wild in a meaningful and life-changing way. Enroll today and embark on a transformative journey with eco-training in Kenya's Masai Mara, the leading force in conservation education. Look at these cuties. Goodness, I love dwarf mongoose. How they are being very, very nice to us, which is why I'm in very low tone. They're nice to us and they're very close. Like they're within three, three and a half meters of me. You are such a cutie. You can really see those claws, very thin, long claws on the paws there. Everyone will be coming back to their resting spot for this evening now. And look at how clever they are. They're all on the western side of this old termite mound. <laughs> that means they're soaking up the sun. <laughs> Tom, have you, I'm pretty sure you've said that before. You say Trishala, the mongoose queen. I feel like this is like this needs to be an AI generated image. Trishala the mongoose queen. <laughs> I do love mongoose. The striped ones, the slender ones, the dwarf ones. Oh, I love the dwarf ones. Look at that, a bit of a glint in the eye from the sun. Oh. Just adorable. Look at this. You can really see how the fur is not a solid color. It's almost as if the fur is banded with lighter brown and darker brown. And from afar, it just looks like it's dark brown. But when we look here, you can actually see the bits of gray. Oh, they are really concentrating. <laughs> I think some of their members may be on the other side of the road. Maybe that's what they're looking at, but they are so, so curious. And that's what I love about them is that much like elephants, they're always doing something, always up to something. It's never a dull moment with them. And they pay attention to you. Every little movement, if Mpo moves just a little bit, they look at Mpo. If I move or I start speaking, they look at me. <laughs> Rolling trouble, you say woohoo, mongoose. Yes, love to spend time with mongoose. also hear them calling faintly in the background I think that this group is actually quite large I've heard them calling from the west of us in front of us uh, to the side of us as well it's time to regroup it's time to collect as much sunshine and heat energy as they can before they retreat into their burrows Ooh, Penny, that's a tough one. You'd like to know how can we tell if a mongoose is male or female? 
It's very difficult, Penny. Um, there is a slight size difference, but even even still, um, you're going to have to watch them. Behavior is the best way to tell them apart. There's basically no sexual dimorphism. So I have no idea whether we're looking at three males, three females, two females, one male, two males, one female. I have no idea. But you'll find that females will be taking care of of little pups. Um, obviously, if you see her with a tiny little pup, that's a that's a good indication that you're looking at a female. But otherwise, it's really, really, really difficult. Their genitals are not very obvious either. So it's a toughie. Now, unfortunately, I did manage to get a very close look at a little dwarf mongoose once. Um, somebody found it as, as roadkill for me. That's how, uh, that's how I know the people who care about me, when they bring back roadkill for me to investigate. Um, and unfortunately, it was a little dwarf mongoose, and I could get a really close look at it and its body. And it's very difficult, even with looking you know, between their legs. It's quite difficult. cuties. I feel like they're, it's not the same three that we're seeing all the time. Like this one here, it left and then came back, but I think this is a different one. I think they're taking turns to check us out. Even that whisper, it heard it, turned its head towards me. I'm gonna send you over to Tessa now. Uh, I might stick around with them for a few more minutes, but I think I might follow up on something else that I heard during this time with the mongoose. That sounds like such a cool sighting. There's nothing quite like spending time with a colony of mongooses right next to the car. Very, very nice. That's all I was looking for yesterday and our mongooses hid. But we've taken a step back from the lion search for now. We're not actively searching, but we're doing more of a sit and wait kind of attempt. I suppose you could call it. We figured we'd sit at the dam and appreciate the hippos because they're becoming quite active. The weather has turned. You can see how rough the surface of the water is looking. It's gotten very cold very quickly. The wind has picked up. The sun has gone behind some clouds that are building up pretty quickly too with this cold front coming in. And so the hippos have decided it's time to start moving around pretty quickly. Now they're spread out at the moment. There's some around the back left where it curves. And there's some that have been fairly close to us and are moving around the dam. So hopefully they decide to come back. And we figured with this change in the weather, with the fact that it's getting pretty late in the afternoon, because at the moment it's almost 5 p.m. here, it's going to get dark probably in about, what, an hour, Gert? Around there, maybe. Yeah, well, both of us haven't been here for a while, so we actually don't know. Good point. <laughs> I'm trying to think what time it started getting dark yesterday. I think it was just before six. So it's a good time for lions to be moving. Since we found the spot where they had clearly killed and eaten something, where that little hyena was, and there were no other lions there, I don't think the other lions are actually here. Wherever they are, I think they missed out on that opportunity of a meal, which is probably why those three looked so fat. They were gorged on food. There was quite literally 
nothing left of whatever they killed in it. So, if they stay there, and I think they will because they are so full, the other lions will probably try and come to them and hopefully they come past the dam on their way. We've covered all of the other roads to the east of those lines other than the far eastern boundary. And we haven't done the stretch of the northern boundary that's just above us. So we don't know if they might be there, but hopefully they come through here and stop off at the dam first. Get ready for your daily dose of African wildlife magic. Be enchanted by the intimate moments shared by the animals as they drink, play and interact in their natural habitat. With our daily wildlife videos, you'll experience the thrill of safari adventures without ever having to leave your seat. Let the wild adventure unfold right before your eyes. Africam. Always live, always wild. Great, that is the uh, young giraffe moving there. It's really difficult now to probably be flare on the lens, but uh, you might see the movement. It's not a baby, it's, it might be over six months, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere there, five to six. He's still with the mother, hang around with the mother. Mother still have to teach the how to, the lyrics have to defend yourself and able to move in the area where it's always food for you to survive. Population of giraffe in Prideland is looking great, beautiful. Wherever you drive, you tend to see giraffe. That tells you the ground itself and trees that are here, they're still giving healthy food for the number of giraffes that are roaming around in the area. So we've repositioned ourselves a little bit because the hippos decided to come to the far end of the dam. So, so did we. 
and I feel like it was a really good decision. There's one coming closer to us, obviously trying to give us a bit of a sneak attack. <laughs> it actually looks like a smallish hippo, so I'm wondering if this might be a sub-adult. That's just exploring a bit in the dam on its own, a little bit away from the family. A nice little adventure, coming to check who we are, what we're doing. Ah, oh, never mind, mom is there too. So it's definitely a youngster because its chin is resting on mom's back. Oh, no, mom's making a getaway. Maybe mom needs an escape from the sub-adult. But they're definitely moving quite a lot at the moment. The sun has broken through the clouds very briefly again, but it won't be like that for long. There's a big cloud bank building. So I'm hoping the hippos are going to get active a little earlier than normal when it comes to actually leaving the water too. Rolling trouble. I'm really happy to hear that because that's exactly what we were going for. We've been searching for lions, we found the lions, lots of excitement, lots of movement and now it's time to just sit down for a little bit, be peaceful and soak it in at a very pretty waterhole. hear the game drive radio in the background. It is on the lowest volume. But it's just so we can stay informed. Now the other three hippos are in that little corner up at the top right there that you can see. And the one almost looked like it wanted to come <laughs> wanted to come out of the water. Sorry. My brain stuttered there. And it certainly seems like if they're gonna come out of the water I have a feeling they'll go to that bank that's just to the right of them it looks like a nice place to enter and exit and I've actually just spotted right there is a really cool path that sandy bank you can see leads up to a very clear path that goes out of the water that's really cool look there's another one wow so this is definitely a spot they've used before Maybe that's why they're slowly headed to that edge. They want to go straight up and out. I suppose it makes sense as well to use the clear path and then go straight into the thickets to try and keep themselves safe as they exit the water. That's probably their most vulnerable time. But we're going to stick around for a little longer and see if anything else decides to come down to the dam and we'll send you over to Rexon to see his giraffes. Great! It is unbelievable. We, we have this uh, uh, young giraffe still walking around, following the mother in a certain distance. It's about like 100, 150 distance. The mother is always in the front and uh, looking around in the area. It's in the nature of giraffe. Very clever system how they went, how they, they do things. You find giraffe female, mother will start to check around while the youngster coming behind. Wherever they come from, most of the time, it's less danger. Unless if the lions are witnessing that, because sometimes also the lions use their own experience. They can notice if a mother there is there or, or less. What can do, which area they can approach. But most cases, if they've been on that area and walk a pass, it means that uh, nothing that uh, is serious. A mother will check around. If you feel like a vulnerable, you go back to the youngster. A youngster will get hunted in this age, maybe from lions, pride of lions. I've even seen leopard going for bigger, a young giraffe like this. Unless if it's a strong, big male, we can do that. Because males sometimes come, and again, in different location, you find males concentrate in different animals. Especially in the area where males are always successful and hunt. Take an example of the big dominant male in, in Juma, Mulawat, how big it is, and also previous male, Tingana, how big was it? 
And those who are big mouths that can simple, um, if they find this youngster lying down, they can take chances. And sometimes they can be successful. They can kill a giraffe like this. But standing still like that, it's a big giraffe. A leopard cannot try to bring it down unless if it happens shows weakness. There's, it can be something like that. Giraffe are vulnerable from lions in most cases, but especially in, uh, in, in summer where it's raining. It's very easy for proud of lions to make a kill when the hunt giraffe or also drive, driving, um, or drive giraffe in an area where it's always wet, tar root, because this animal, once they lose balance and fall down, it's for good. They cannot get up easily. But in a very dry condition like this, the lions will stay away from these guys because they can run very fast. They can defend, they can kick. So it needs, sometimes if it's wet, they might dry, drive the giraffe into a drainage system where it's water and slippery and where the ground is very wet. Lions know all of these, these skills that they use to hunt these species easily. But uh, again, Try that hunt giraffe in most cases. You find that it has to be a very strong melt that uh, are can able to pass the pate on a hunt. In most cases, you know that males, they do hunt, yes, if they are in collation. For themselves, they hunt and successful. But if they are within the structure of the breeding head, it, I mean, for lion pride, they tend to be like not really participating quite a lot more especially females will be up in front hunting when they kill something else it's in the nature of males to come and um really steal the kill away from the female because it's the duty for them to patrol scent mark they need to put a healthy scent mark if they're not there will be challenge and you cannot send healthy scent mark around in the area if you're not healthy because the other species they will read you through from that. That's the reason they concentrate in big animals like so as giraffe, buffalo. Of course, from the baby giraffe here at Pradland, let me send you to Steve and see what he's up to in Amakala. Thanks, Rex, and hello, everybody. Have you missed us? We have been here on the other side of the road looking at a bush. Well, actually not. I have a female cheetah with four cubs, and for the last 45 minutes, we've been watching her stare down a herd of red hartebeest. And in amongst the herd of red heart best are two brand new little youngsters. Just hang on a sec, can I just see the talk in the radio? Yeah, you are welcome to join. She is showing some interest in some red heart to best here. We're not far from where you left us though. Okay, so she's been very patient. We've had her in the middle of our camera for quite some time and just before you came to us she's gone behind this bush and well we were talking a lot earlier about the patience of a guide and how sometimes you just have to wait it out. But we know predators learn through experience, inexperienced young predators make a lot of mistakes and older experienced predators take more time make sure conditions are good javelin lovely bush and cheetahs it is a marvelous bush isn't it i thought so too it was definitely the highlight of the afternoon it is a sweet thorn acacia karoo the only acacia we find down in the cape Now I'm almost certain that she's going to try and catch one of the young hartebeest. Although they keep getting lost in amongst the thick vegetation around the parents' feet. I haven't seen a 
young hartebeest for a little bit of time now. It's possible that they move a bit and then lie down, move a bit and lie down. They did look brand spankingly new. And while we know our predators always choose the easiest meal, and if it comes to a small baby hartebeest that's practically harmless to the cheetah versus a strapping adult that has horns and the ability to kick she would definitely go for the easier meal Don't forget everybody, this is a live and interactive game drive experience. So what you're seeing is a live bush coming to you live from Amakala Private Game Reserve here in the Eastern Cape. And this is happening in real time. Time right now is 5.09 Sunday. What is the date? The 27th of August 2023. Yes, full the best. Full the best. Come closer. Come closer. Now, obviously, everybody, you know, we're never willing our animals to be killed, you know. But, you know, we've got a female cheetah here, and not far behind her, she did stash them away. She's got four little cubs. So they need to feed, they need to meet, and uh, we're giving both the cheetah and the hartebeest complete freedom to decide their own fate here. We're just here to witness and bring you the action. Chatting around the fire is an ancient practice that has connected humanity for centuries and we want to keep it alive in our modern age. As an explorer, you'll have access to intimate gatherings with our naturalists, fascinating guests and experts where we share knowledge, insights and stories around a crackling fire. Rediscover the power of connection. Sign up to be an explorer today and experience the magic of Wild Earth's Fireside Chats.
we are still playing the patience game and so far it's been very calming and very worth it we've still got the young hippos just in front of us I'm sure one of them will pop up sometime soon they've been playing a bit of a bobbing up and down game I think they're getting themselves ready for an evening full of adventures while they graze now the wind is still pretty hard in this section I'm hoping that's going to get everyone moving a bit early we're not going to be here for too long because I think if we get lucky, right place, right time, within the next 15 minutes or so, we might find some lines crossing in on the boundary. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. But it has been fun to spend time with the hippos. was here in I think it was March I'm guessing it's the same two calves they were still really small they've grown a lot since the last time I was here so it's really nice to see how the family is expanding both in size and in number it seems like there's at least seven or eight hippos here the last time I was here there were I think five five or six so they've been joined by a couple more family members all spread out across the dam we're getting to that perfect time of the evening to have cats moving and speaking of it sounds like Steve has a cheetah busy stalking thanks Tess well here we go you can see her now we weren't lying it was a marvelous bush but what a marvelous cat now when we first found her this afternoon, she was limping a little bit. Her back right leg looked a bit sore, but we've watched her move a number of times and she hasn't exhibited that same gait since. Maybe she's just been sitting on it for a while. She's staring down those heart beers. They don't know that she's there. Pumulela, I believe she's called. Thank you, Morgan. Just going over the other side of this little ridge here, which is disappointing. And she's going to take another angle. She's decided to crouch down low and stalk around. Franny, what a way to start, isn't it? Adrenaline. Well, we haven't experienced any adrenaline yet, but uh, we have been sitting on the edge of our seat because when she decides to go, well, then it's on. She's now going to use the cover of those trees there to get a little bit closer. She's trying to stay on top of them. I think, I'm just assuming that she wants them to run down the hill. Running down the hill might cause them to lose footing. Maybe the heart to be a strategy of escaping is to go uphill I don't know I haven't spent a lot of time with heart beast are very fast animals they are open plains specialists and they are another wonderful acacia karoo there just to block out the frame <laughs> there we go she's coming through out of the thorns of the karoo you can see the body language is one of of interest now See how she's using the, the bushes to mask her movement. She was moving straight through the open. She would be seen. But uh, a camouflaged background with a camouflaged moving cat blends quite nicely. 
I feel like she also just wants to be on top. She wants to see where are those little youngsters I saw before. Little youngsters will be doing nicely. I know it's not ideal, everybody, to see a cheetah catching a baby animal, but needs must. We spoke before about her having four youngsters, mouths to feed. Stacy is magical, isn't it? That afternoon sun. Hard to be a slicker, quite, quite wonderful in the afternoon as well. The afternoon sunlight on the red bodies. Goes. Very backward turning horns. A sub adult in the middle there. Franny, if she catches a baby, she will first obviously suffocate it and then she'll catch her breath. What she does next is hard to say. She might call her cubs or she might feed. You know, the, the saying on the airplanes about putting the mask on your face before you put the mask on those of children and others. She needs to regain energy and she needs to feed for herself. Obviously she will provide food for her youngsters, but we haven't had a clear look at her stomach, so I don't know how full she is. I'm not even certain if she's still suckling. I think she might still be to a lesser degree. She calling. She's calling. You can't hear her calling, but she's doing the the chirping sound. You can see the mouth moving. I wonder if her cubs have been slowly following her there. I haven't seen them. They weren't far behind her. And it is incredible how far the sound of a mother calling cubs can travel. It's a very specific tone that the youngsters learned to associate with. Maybe she heard it, one of them calling first. It's more of a chirping sound than anything other cats produce. see them. Dark man, I mean, you know, possibly, I mean she's done a lot of work to get to where she is now. Can you see one? Okay, so she's going back now. I think she's heard her cub. Morgan says the heart burst was looking straight at her. I think she was definitely close enough, but you know, she can't risk injury. She wants to maintain stealth. 
and uh, she's now been spotted now she's going to go so all of that she doesn't look like she's starving that's for sure she's calling as she moves maybe you all be lucky to see her cubs with us as well this afternoon Hi, my name is Claire. Wild Earth has been part of this home for many years as it connects us to the bush and the culture that we love and miss so much. I became an explorer so that other people around the world can get to experience the African bush in this unique way as well. I am beyond excited that I was drawn to win the prize at Amakala Game Reserve for three nights. It is truly a dream come true. Sign up today and you could be the one experiencing it for yourself. It's just an amazing species. If you bumped a baboon by surprise in a very close range, you must know that uh, eye to eye it can be so much dangerous. If you hold something, don't let it uh, down. You must hold it because it really, if you're nervous, they can read. If you're not nervous, they can tell also. So they much stand the ground against you. And such a dangerous animal. They have a very long canine. These guys are such amazing and, uh, and strong. Sometimes you tend to see them defending themselves from the leopards and, and, and other species that hunt them. Sometimes a fully grown baboon can weigh up to 45, 50 kg easily and is a heavy species from 14 up to 49, 50 and it's amazing species. They can be from 45 up to 75 centimeter tall. Baboon are sometimes big. really amazing in most cases to defend themselves they use young males young males they are there to defend so 
It's that time, the time of the evening that I love. If you're in the city, it's when the lights are starting to come on, but there's still a bit of light from the atmosphere. It's beautiful. The sun is setting. All those diurnal creatures are starting to get even more alert. The wind has died down a little bit. The air is still fresh, but there's that hint of humidity. It's beautiful. And the night is about to come alive. So we had heard some alarm calls kind of way off to the west, um, but in the distance. So I went to follow up and I've just come from that area, but unfortunately we weren't lucky with tracks either, but it is a difficult place because it's around the power lines road and it's very rocky. So tracks are best in fine grained or finer grained soils because it can actually create an impression. Where it's very rocky, you can't create an impression. And I did just hear that tortoise pan, a male leopard, was found to the west of us. So I wonder if we just missed him as he was coming out of Juma. The timing and the area fits. So, yeah. But anyway, it'd be nice to spend some time with some elephants, especially with the setting sun. And before we know it, Before we know it, the light will be gone, the night will set in, and then we'll start again. It does feel like a bit of a reset here in the bush. It feels like the time when we're, when it's daylight is one version of the safari, and then when it's nighttime, it's a different version of the safari. Hi, running bear. You say, what a great day to tune in. Yeah, Sunday afternoon or evening. What a great day to tune in. We haven't seen any leopards this afternoon. Did we see any leopards this morning? No, we didn't. Sorry, I just thought I... I saw something that looks suspiciously like a log with ears. Probably is just that, never mind. This time of day is also quite difficult for your eyes. It needs to readjust. There's less light in the atmosphere, uh, and at the same time, your eyes need to get used to picking up or being more light sensitive as opposed to color sensitive. So there's weird shapes. You might also notice it when you're driving around sunset or just after sunset. It takes a little while for your eyes to adjust. Also keeping an eye out for tracks. Nothing so far. There's all the movement from the day. So tracks are very obvious. Tracks of predators that is. Just when I said the wind has died down, it's starting to pick up a little bit now. So all the herd animals that I've been seeing are just in clumps. The impalas are just tight, tight, tight. Are they gonna move from what area, whatever area they are in towards those open areas and keep those tight bundles? Oh, Andrew, the video guy. Yes, you're right. It is chameleon searching time. Almost. Almost. So far we've just seen the one, but I mean, given that it's dry and cold, I think that we did pretty well. And, you know, I saw it last night. That's not bad. It's all about, I mean, if, you, if you're not looking for it, you're not going to find it, right? So we've got to keep looking. But soon, oh, when those first rains come, you're going to see the bush absolutely explode. I think my favorite time in the bush is that the first two weeks of those first rains, that rainy season, because the bush is not big and bushy enough yet to obscure your view, but everything is just alive. 
the sound of the nighttime, I mean, it can even be overwhelming. The buzz. So last night uh, I was in bed and I was listening to the sounds. And I think one sound that I really love but I forgot about was that of the Scops Owl. I mean, fiery neck nightjar, I love that sound at night, but that Scops Owl just reminds me of being in, in bed in the bush. Hopefully you will hear one a little later and I can point it out to you. Anyway, I'm going to keep on searching and I'm going to send you over to Rexon. He's with some baboons. Great. We are trying to uh, be habituating this uh, baboon uh, from vehicles. It looks like they are really doing well. These uh, baboons, of course, you may find sometimes in the structure in, in the area, they can be from eight up to 200 individual members uh, per troop. That can happen, especially if these baboons stay wild and they don't break uh, out from the reserve, go to the outside where in towns where they tend to become problem animal and try to reduce the number of baboon because sometimes these guys if they feel like in numbers they feel like they have they're strong in 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 the area where in human habitat they can fight they can do anything they can go inside uh, kitchens and everything they can steal everything so if baboons tend to get to that way the our Mpumalanga Park Sport will try to really reduce the number or make sure that they don't go back there by really reducing uh, certain males that uh, know very well how to break through in houses. I've seen baboon before in the lodges. What they do? Most of the time these guys, they abuse the little ones. If they want to break through the window, what they will do, they hold the young ones and throw it uh, in the window and break inside is where they can go inside and start to vandalize. They know how to vandalize these guys, um, especially in lodges where it's food all the time. Once they break in, they will be always breaking in. It's uh, really one of the most intelligent species. We will talk about elephant and other things, but baboon is one of the intelligent species out here in the bush. They can able to open the zip of the tent. They can able to open the lock. If anything like uh, where even doors of, a ca of, of, of cars, they can open themselves and get in and they cannot lock themselves. They can even come out at their own time as long as they get what they need to get. So it's one of the most species that they observe quite a lot what we do and they can uh, really copy from there and do that all the time. But in, in areas where they stays in mountains and all that, you tend to see them also loved by, uh, uh, I mean, by leopards. Leopard all the time, they will be following them. And the reason why baboon, once they have an experience, is one of the species, it's really in wild, but they can live up to, at, uh, from 15 to 30 years. Well, the, if it does have experience of uh, opening the door and do all of that, it's easy to pass on from the generation to the next. You'll find that the particular trip will be a problem around the area because they pass experience also. They're like other species for, as elephant that use intelligence. But most of the time, they weigh up to 14 up to, 14 up to 45 kg. It depends on the area whether uh, some of it they even get to 50 kg. I've seen it uh, once before where baboon weigh up to 50 kg. It's a heavy, heavy species, of course. They are ranging here in Africa. Most of the time, you know that if we in Africa, whether in east, west, we do have baboons around in the area. I like the scientific name, Papio, that it's a baboon. It's a name of the in scientific name we call it Papio. It's unbelievable. We we have in different country of Africa we have different baboons. 
We now have olive baboons, of chakmans, we have all these kind of baboons that uh, are, are really in different countries of, of Africa. All of them, they have same behavior. They invest the power into the young bull, young, I mean young baboons, and we call it those young or that kind of collective. It called oligarch. When they invest, the young baboon most of the time what you do, when they go up in the trees, young baboon those are in them uh, and in their prime, they'll let everyone go up and they'll really able to be in the low bottom bottom of the tree in order to stop anything that might be trying to go for the little one. If you want to see how strong is these guys, if a leopard come here and catch one of the youngster, all of them will be flying and going to the leopard. It, it can be so much dangerous. It's one of the species, if they don't see well, I know that they can walk with two feet in order to see in a level of the grass. So all the time, they are really, really dangerous species and very aggressive in anything that might be trying to hunt within the I mean, structure of the troop. These guys I have a lot also. Those sounds just go straight through you. It's unbelievable. <laughs> In most cases, I know that uh, I'm the Shangan tribe. Most of people, they'll say, as clever as baboon, because they refer these animals very, very clever, because they can associate lots of things. You know, African, the Shangan people, in a lot of time, uh, they use, we, they used to plow fields, is how we, we brought up ourselves, by plowing all different veggies, most of the time, when you want baboon to uh, not to get into your field, you need to um, tie anything that will blow by the direction of wind. It could be plastic, it could be cloth, it could be uh, uh, um, uh, anything that can be really, when it flaps, the baboon cannot able to come because it looks like people walking. 
you used to tie each and every corner of the fence, also from the millies and all that. But baboon will stop from the distance and watch that thing as it going blow by the direction of wind and able to identify that it's not a human being. It's just something that is there. They will get in. What baboon fears the most is a snake. If you can able to... So we've made our way around to Gauri Dam. There were some elephants really, really deep in the block around Gavigo Shortcut, which is the road we just came from on that side. Um, but I tried to find them, you know, like where we could actually see them, and I couldn't. So I thought I'd come here because maybe some elephants would make their way from that spot down here to have a drink. anybody just yet. I feel a little impatient. Like I'm waiting for that sun to really go down because I feel like things are about to happen. Wait, there's a vehicle coming. Pop us in here for a moment. I'm thinking about owls as well. I've been hoping that we'll be able to see owls. particularly a pearl-spotted owlet. I've been hearing them all the time, but I haven't been able to see them. And actually in this particular spot, uh, oh, what did we see? We had two chameleons. Was I with you and Paul? And the one, the owl came and grabbed the one chameleon. Oh, it was a very sad time. It was. Two animals that I love to see at night, and unfortunately, they are enemies. All right, let's head on down. I'm seeing lots of hyena tracks. Okay, that was an overstatement. I'm seeing some hyena tracks. <laughs> they were around the edge of the road, the path that's not driven very often, so it could be old. It's also a little protected from the wind at the edge. It would make sense because down that way was where Thalamba was over the last few days. I did check that tree again, by the way, just in case. Sometimes you never know, they might just hang around near where they had the kill. But she was, she was not there. Plus we had tracks for her going past the camp and further, I think Tess was following, following up further south. Hmm, we can have a quick look-see here. Nothing happening though. Nothing happening yet, I should say. I have the feeling something going to happen this evening. All right, let me send you over to Tess and see how she feels about this evening. Does she feel the power too? Oh, thanks Trish. I hope you're enjoying the peace and quiet of the dam and that you get spoiled with a nice surprise. I'm feeling pretty good about the evening. It is still pretty windy. You can see this big spider web kind of blowing away. <laughs> now luckily it is at the bottom of the tree. The ones at the top are going to be struggling a lot more. And there are actually others in this tree but they're a little bit higher up. This one isn't looking very active but I think it could be because it's not dark enough yet. It's a community web spider's nest, and when I saw it, the first thing that came to mind is, one, I haven't shown you a spider web in a while. I think the last one I showed you was covered in dew at Amakala on a beautiful frosty morning. And two, I can't stop thinking about Trishala's story of eating a spider web in the morning to get water. And it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> Because when I think of a spider web, I'd love 
to think that it would be one of those like the ones at Amakala or very big you know circular web but all I think of when I think of that story is a community web spider's nest like this one and there is no way there is not enough money in the world that anyone could pay me to get close enough to this that I could consider getting water from it it's not happening nope not happening but it is a fascinating thing to behold from a distance this is a this is a comfortable distance we're at now it's close enough that we can see some really gorgeous details in all of those webs down the sides you can see it's quite broken down it hasn't been repaired in a while and the silk is looking quite frayed I didn't ever think I'd say that about a web but it's looking a bit frayed I'm hoping that there might still be spiders around. It looks like <laughs> it's blowing so much in the breeze. <laughs> it looks like there might be one or two. I wonder if I must try and hold that branch, although I can't promise I'll be any good at it. I will try. So ugh, the vehicle is going to move as I untangle myself from my seat. Actually, let me try from this side. I don't know how well it's going to work, but Gert, we are going to try. Oh, I can't believe I'm about to get close to this. The only place I can reach is here. That's probably worse, eh? Hey? <laughs> That's fine. Is it? You just hold it. My hands are so... Mm, hard. <laughs> My hands are so shaky. I really... A little bit closer. No. Mm. <laughs> can I get a stick and hold it at the top? <laughs> Oh no, it's not gonna work! <laughs> oh Lauren, well, I really don't want this thing to come alive with spiders right now, but I suppose it is fascinating to look at. It's a whole different part of life out here. At least it stopped blowing so I don't have to hold it anymore. <laughs> that makes me happy. Also, I'm worried holding that bottom branch that I was holding just now. I mean, there's some of the catchment webs attached to that. And if the branch moves without, if that branch moves with my hand without the rest of the web, I don't want to rip any of that beautiful silk. But I was looking to see if there are any spiders in there and I really can't see any. Ultimately, all of the little entrances are going to be hidden so well. Oh, there it's blowing again. Most of them you normally find are towards the bottom of this community nest but some of them you can see some clear holes into the sides of the silk into all of those leaves that are packed into the middle to make that safe space for all of those spiders but the nice thing is I suppose being here now the Sun is still up so the spiders have not yet come out to freak me out even more Do you love relaxing at a waterhole with the sights and sounds of Africa all around you? Well, we have some really exciting news for you. From August 1st, Africam is joining forces with Wild Earth to bring the majesty of Africa right into your living room with nine incredible new waterhole cameras from across South Africa and Kenya. Get ready to embark on a new journey. This is Live at the Waterhole.
<laughs> this hyena is really curious. <laughs> it doesn't really know what it wants right now. A hyena is a highly intelligent animal, so you probably find... Oh, actually, I recognize that marking on its side, I think. It looks like a bee on its back. This might be one of the males of the clan. You'll probably find that this hyena, being so intelligent, has noticed we've stopped here for a while. And it's wondering why. Also, bear in mind, I was out of the car looking at the spider's web. <laughs> Rock candy, Susie, very true. The hyena is probably quite happy that I'm here. <laughs> I'd like to think that much, but I really don't think that that is the case, as you can see by it walking away. <laughs> Came to investigate, was kind of happy to see us, and then decided, eh, there's nothing here for me, I'm gonna leave. Totally fine by me. Doing a bit of a loop. Oh, there we go, it is. So it's cacao. Cacao is probably one of the less seen hyenas in the clan at the moment. That's really cool. Another hyena to add to my list that I've seen so far. Bye, hyena. So we are in this dip. There possibly could be some Varose eagle owls. To me. Just give a quick look around. Uh, before they left. But they said it's quite obvious and it's on it has to be on one of the big trees and I don't see them. I would love to spend some time with the Varose eagle owls. There was a pair of Varose eagles, uh Varose eagle owls in that tree that Plalamba had her kill, that big jackberry that we've been spending time there at these last few days. There were two big rose eagle owls there. I mean, years ago. Nothing, nothing. I think that this wind kind of makes it feel like something's afoot, something's brewing kind of feels a little bit like the wind that brings a storm but it's not as warm but you know that kind of I don't know feeling like something's something's happening and yes of course I do have my eye out for chameleons as usual What do I think is going to happen? I don't know. I can't speak to that. I just feel like something's going to happen. But, I mean, something's always going to happen out in the bush. It's a more a question of, are we going to be there when it happens? So this road that I'm on right now is a road that the old hyena dens used to be on. It's called Taxon's Road. It leads straight to a dam. And the reason I like this road is because both leopards, Shidulu and Tlalamba, used to use this road. It was almost like the boundary of their territories. There was a time where every single morning I would see tracks for one of them on this road. But I suppose also with the hyena den here, it kind of felt like there was a hub of activity in this area. It wasn't just one den, it was three dens. So it always, there was always movement. Now things a lot quieter along this road. I 
did pop through past the sausage tree as well in that dip see if there were any bats going to work on it not as far as I could see unfortunately see what I saw them for. Oof, this is going to be such a weird angle. There's some goo there, something very shiny. Can you see it? Just there. Wedge, you'd like to know what the time is in South Africa? Wait, let me check exactly. It is 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Exactly. So, sorry, I'm poor. If you look with your eyes, you'll see it's a shiny thing there. Shiny. Yeah, it's just stuck on the on the branch. There we go. What are you? It is so so shiny. I'm gonna hop off and have a look. Sorry, I don't want to um, be in your in your way. There we go. What are you? Ah, it's just a little bit of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> it's just escaped me. Resin. It's like just a bit of resin that's come out. Interesting. I'm not sure I've ever seen it on a variable bush willow, perhaps a large fruited bush willow. It's hard to tell with so little leaves. So plants will produce resins and latex and that kind of thing or to heal wounds. So maybe it had a bit of a wound there or a little bit of an infection. Maybe it even got stung by something. Then it will start to ooze. Mostly latex depending on which type. It can be a latex to heal wounds, it can be a latex to produce uh, poisonous substances. It can be any of those things. It'll be to help the plant along, whether it's help it heal or defend itself in some way. Very cool. Anyway, let me send you back over to Tess. I'm going to keep on moving towards the dam. And you can't even see this little thing is a bird. It looks like a ball of fluff in the tree. Unbelievably cute. Curled up on this little branch. Now I know you can't see colors right now because we're in infrared, but it looks like it's a female chin spot batis. And I'm saying that because when we spotted it, we spotted it because of the very rufous color just below the head. Now it's tucked away really tightly, tucked its head in, and you can just see the little feet clinging onto the squarage in the night. Now chin spot battises are really well known for perching on low hanging branches, usually about a meter off of the ground, and that's exactly where this little one is. Safely perched, nice and tucked away and hidden by the greenery. Now, if you're not familiar with a chin spot battis, it really is an absolutely tiny bird. We're talking just over 10 centimeters, an adult maybe about 13, and weighing about 12 grams. So you can see why the leaves would cover the entire thing. We just got lucky and happened to spot it in a gap. It's so little. So she's probably going to be roosted here the whole night trying to keep herself safe and she's doing a great job because she's very well camouflaged. Wow, look at that. So the markings on her feathers actually help a bit because from this distance you cannot even see her. Look how well she blends in. Those black and white markings, so chin spot battis is majority black and white with a bit of gray. The markings that you have coming across the wing look almost like a leaf from a distance. Now bear in mind the animals aren't actually going to see in color at night. 
So the colours don't matter. It doesn't matter that you've got Rufus on her. It's more the fact that she wants to blend in and look like leaves. Catherine, it's the cutest little fluff ball I think I've ever seen. The last chin spot batis I, I spotted um, perched like this was on an open branch in the middle of nowhere with no leaves around it. So it was quite obvious that there was something sitting on the branch. This one, she's done a spectacular job. She's so well hidden in this little thicket. And she is just snoozing away. Hey? Oh, you can see an owl. Wow, Khaled spotted an owl. Do I need to move back? Okay. Oh, we're getting lucky with all of the birds. Okay, so we're going to start, turn around and move backwards. To show you an owl, all of the luck. Goodbye, chin spot batters, please stay safe. Pretty please, pretty please. Right, I'm going to reverse in there. That looks nice and open. If you've ever had to turn a car in the bush, always try and use the J turn. Reverse in backwards in the shape of the J, pull out forwards, one impact on the soil. Nice and smooth. And it's also a lot more fun than doing a 50 point turn. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go, oh, there I see it. I was gonna say I'm gonna go slowly until I spot it but Gareth has done it yet again. Oh, your eyes are just too good. Mine need to play catch up. Oh, hello, owl. So it's mostly a silhouette. You can clearly see the ear tufts though. And uh, that little chin spot batter definitely wants to stay hidden now that there's a predator around. So we're very close to that section of the riverbed where the spotted eagle owls, the family known as the wigs, where they come and raise their chicks every year. I wonder if this could be one of the wigs. They are resident, they do spend the whole year here, but we only really see them in the breeding season normally because they're so hard to spot. Wow, did you see that reflection from its eye? That was unreal. Oh, this owl is definitely looking for some food. Oh, it's turning its head around like that. So it's perched up there and it is just listening and watching, hoping to spot movement. Those eye shines. That's unreal. I think this must be one of the wigs. <laughs> Linda Foley, how did I know you were going to be that excited? <laughs> we found your owl. There's a lot of calls around us. Fiery neck, night jars. I heard a pill spotted owlet earlier. And the wind is fairly calm in this section. Just a slight rustle through the leaves every now and then. A great spot to be hunting. You see it's chosen a very open branch, which is perfect to drop down in your prey unsuspecting. Unsuspectingly. doesn't have to contend with any leaves making a noise as it swoops down. It also means it's got a great field of view. Remember owls can turn their heads to about 270 degrees. So this owl, from looking forwards, can look all the way backwards and past backwards, round to the left or round to the right. Amazing how intense the scanning process is for this owl tonight. Oh, it heard something. Do you see how quickly it snapped its head back towards the right there? Oh, I 
love that eye shine. Now remember we are in infrared so there's actually no visible light. That reflection we're seeing is the reflection of the infrared. <laughs> in trouble, you're wigging out. <laughs> Very nice. Very good one. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll have to catch you later then. Ha ha. Back at you. <laughs> I wonder if it would let us get closer. <laughs> Nadine, the voice in my ear, that was a horribly sarcastic laugh. I loved it. <laughs> Goal achieved. <laughs> Did you hear? The schools are out. Yep, it's time for the school holidays and Wild Earth is celebrating with special content just for kids. Join us from the 21st to the 25th of August for five days of fun. Our guides will be taking on a number of survival tasks and together we'll learn how to survive in the wilderness, build things and have fun in the wild too. Wild Earth Kids, it's in your nature. Well, we've come down to the dam and there is an elephant <laughs> having a lot of fun. It's low-key fun though. We've seen them swimming in this dam and playing and being very boisterous, but this is low-key fun. This elephant keeps sucking up a little bit of water and then blowing it into tiny little specks so it just looks like a, like a mist around him. I wonder if you just heard him kind of going <laughs> I do hear other elephants or I did hear other elephants around in the distance I heard the breaking of branches but this guy is just on he's lonesome enjoying a quiet moment can you hear the fiery neck night chair in the background saying, good Lord, deliver us. But I always remembered it as, hello, good looking. <laughs> Look at him, just touching the tip. 
tip of his trunk, collecting a little bit of water. <laughs> and then dropping it. That's him blowing air through his trunk into his mouth with the water. Oh, this is such a beautiful evening set right here. Got an elephant, the gentle trickling of the water. I love that sound. I think a lot of you do too. For me, that's the sound of nighttime at Juma. I just want him to drink properly. <laughs> He's so relaxed and this feels so peaceful. I mean, you're watching in infrared, so you can actually see the elephant. I'm watching with my eyes, and I can only really hear him. Every now and then when he moves his legs, I can see the, the reflection of the sky on, in the water. A bit of light there, but otherwise it's just darkness. And I kind of love it. I know there's an elephant there. I can hear the trickling of the water, but I can't actually see it in the darkness. Wow, that was a wonderful moment of just Peace and quiet. Hi Justin, you'd like to know why do birds not get close to elephants? There are plenty of birds that do. One that comes to mind immediately that gets very close to elephants are drongos. Forktailed drongos, they'll follow elephants around. Sometimes they look like they're going to get smashed by their feet as the elephants walk. And they follow them closely because as elephants walk through vegetation, they're disturbing any little insects in there. And that means that the forktail drongo can come in and swoop and grab those insects. So they hang out very close to elephants. Um, starlings will do the same, but not as close as the drongos do. The drongos are really good at maneuvering in small spaces. But you'll find starlings close to them. Uh, you'll find hornbills, not that close but if they settle into an area you know like near a dam or somewhere where there's good bit of a good bit of feeding and they're there for some time you'll see lots of other birds coming along except especially insectivores those birds that eat insects you'll see them coming along and just hanging around on the branches waiting for the elephants to disturb the vegetation as they move but larger birds like um, Egyptian geese they, they, they tend to avoid the elephants and that's mostly because I don't know if they actually purposely avoid the elephants but sometimes elephants can get really irritated with guinea fowl and birds around the water's edge especially because they barrel down hoping to get a drink and then you know birds are in the way and they sometimes catch it from the elephants 
and the elephants can <laughs> throw water at them, can get angry at them. So I think they just prefer to move out of the way before they're pushed out of the way. And there goes our elephant into the darkness over on the other side. Oh, that was very nice. Very, very, very special. It was so peaceful. Just a lovely moment of chill. Get ready for your daily dose of African wildlife magic. Be enchanted by the intimate moments shared by the animals as they drink, play and interact in their natural habitat. With our daily wildlife videos, you'll experience the thrill of safari adventures without ever having to leave your seat. Let the wild adventure unfold right before your eyes. AFRICAM. Always live, always wild. We are actually in a pretty good spot for both chameleons, leopards and genets. All the things on my list. <laughs> Andrew the video guy, <laughs> staying motivated to do what we do every day. I think everyone is a little bit different. I think it also depends on how you feel being out here every day. For me, I love the bush, I love this area, I think it's absolutely gorgeous and being able to share what I love with people is a massive part of that motivation. Knowing that I can make a difference to someone else's day, that's what keeps me going. But a lot of coffee helps <laughs> and on a, on a particularly grumpy day maybe chocolate <laughs> or pizza, one of the two. <laughs> 
but the biggest motivation is by far you and everyone else at home because being able to share it honestly not in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd be able to do something like this and here I am so if you have dreams go for them even if you don't know you have them yet maybe they'll come along and have lots of coffee Well, the hunt is on, yet again, the last five minutes together or so. What could be the last minute animal? <laughs> it's always a fun game to play. I must say I'm quite happy to have spent it that time, even though it was in the dark with the elephant. But maybe the feeling I was getting was not related to the animals at all. I don't know. Maybe I was hyping myself up. Whatever it is, even though it was a quieter afternoon out in the bush this afternoon for Sunset Safari, it was still good nonetheless. I always enjoy my time out with all of you. And if I could find a chameleon to say our goodbyes, that would be great. Maybe we'll find out what big thing I was feeling in the morning. <laughs> No, I think I was hyping myself up. I get really excited all by myself sometimes. That's true, Nadine, our director says, you never know, there's three minutes left. Something could be right around the corner. I think that's the best thing about going on a live safari, right? We don't know where the animals are. You're seeing the entire process and anything can be around the next corner. I love being surprised by the bush. And it's stuff that you'll never see it coming. It's just all of a sudden, bam, honey badger in the middle of the drainage when you're busy looking at a kingfisher or something like that. I love it. you say please can we see a, a last minute impala Oof. but I'm not in an area where impalas would be hanging out this evening I'm near some drainages impalas will want to hang out where it's nice and open and I don't think we're going to make it up to quarantine in time but we can try It was a great day again and thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Ching, coming on board and getting to know us and the animals as often as you do. Thank you. Oh, oh no, Bella, we just have a few more seconds to find a last minute Impala. Luckily, we we're almost there. Okay, maybe we're not almost there. There's still a bit of this road to go. Oh, well. Oh, no, Nadine is hyping me up as well. She's like, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. No chameleon, no impala. This is what happens when it's windy, everyone. This is what happens. Can't find an animal. But I think we might have to say goodbye just like this. 
I really hope that you had fun with us, even if you didn't see a whole lot this evening. And thank you for your questions and your comments. We'll see you again in the morning. Bye for now. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised.